it would mean a lot to me to win the global championship. I think it would be undescribable emotions for me. I don't think I can describe that. The main goal is probably getting to Denmark, Copenhagen, and doing well at that event. I'm trying to get first. I'm trying to get first to Copenhagen. I mean, the winning, uh, winning is the goal. I think my biggest FNTS goal is probably to get a very good placement, as it's um, played in my home country, and I really, really, really want to do good on home stage. I'm hoping to to look back and and think that I, I gave it my all this year. I'm. Working really hard on my mentality, I'd say. I think if I can be a good leader with good rotations and then also a good fighter, I think that's the best combination to be one of the best players in the world. Most of the work we're doing right now is the SWAT reviews. I think it's the most important part. You learn more by watching the game, I think, than, than playing the game sometimes. We're playing like two to three scrims every day. We're doing a lot of practice for off spawn and we're doing a lot of scrims so that we're ready for everything. So we send us, for example, messages on Discord just to motivate the others so we all grind and get better together. I think every player is always looking to win their first major. It's it's a very big milestone. I think you need to be very smart to win an FNCS. I don't think it need you don't need that much mechanical aspect and like other aspects of the game, I think you just need to be smart, make a good plan around it, and, uh, and just focus on not making any mistakes. When maybe other players are taking a break, I won't take a break, and then so I can get ahead of everyone and win the FNCS. I think uh, a good friendship with your partner is very important. Practicing together and just being like transparent with each other so we can like improve together and tell each other mistakes. I have a better mentality, I just try to focus on the things I really need to improve on and not on the things that I'm already good at. Doing board reviews with my duo, playing every practice session we can and yeah, improving, improving every day. I think we've been practicing a lot. We found some strats, so we will do them uh, in tournaments and that's why we should win the FCS. It would mean a lot to me to win the Global Championship because I would finally have proven to myself and to my family that I've achieved what I've always wanted to achieve. I always knew that if I won it would mean a lot to me. This year it's it's in my home country. I don't think I can describe that. I think it's literally like my main goal, so it means like literally everything. It would be amazing. Uh... Wars, of course, can describe this. It won't, once you win an FNCS, the respect gets put on your name Insta. And it's kind of, you prove yourself, like, yeah, I really did it. Like, this was it. It would just be show that all my work over the last years, I always aimed for it, would finally pay off. And I think it would be undescribable emotions for me.
Don't worry, we couldn't sleep last night either because day two of the EU FNCS Grand Finals is upon us. The German duo of Janice and Reason stepped up big last night. With two victory royales and more than a 60 point lead to second place, this duo won it more than ever. They have the Axe of Champions and with the FNCS Global Championship in sight, the question is, will they make it a reality? Swizzy and Shimoki are not giving up easily, as these two are newcomers to the EU region and want to prove their worth. With a strong day one performance, they're currently in the race for the title, but there are still six more games ahead of them. Will they keep up the pace? Another duo that is not here to play around is Jiraz and Cherry. With a life-changing opportunity within their grasp, they have to keep their heads cool tonight as anything can still happen for this duo. A lot of new teams shaking up the leaderboard after day one but all the regional giants are just a few points behind. Who is gonna make it happen tonight? Only time will tell, but we are in for a ride. The EU FNCS Grand Finals starts now. day two of the FNCS Major Finals. Yesterday we had six electrifying games and we've got six more before we crown our grand champions. They'll be lifting the acts of champions and they'll be booking their place in the global championships towards the end of the year. My name is Frankie Ward. I'm so honored to be with you for this moment, but I'm not gonna be doing it alone because as always, I've got these two legends joining me. It's Mini Minor and Takata. Didn't even practice that. Nailed that it first, first time. time. That was the first time. That's the first it. time. I'm so shocked. I've never first seen try. that before. At least I've never seen it go right. Thank you so much for treating me to the secret handshake. Yes, <laughs> it was. Uh, we haven't been practicing it all day at all. We've been, you know, that was the first time we did it, wasn't it? Look, while the players have been practicing to perform in day two, we've been, you know, practicing our own little things on the side. You've got quite an easy job, to be honest, boys. Easy. We promised it yesterday. If you tune in yesterday, we did, we did promise it. So That's if true. you were waiting for that, then enjoy it. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you're waiting for that. I wasn't disappointed, though, and I wasn't disappointed by the action we saw from our lobby yesterday. There were some surprising results, you might say. Very surprising results. I mean, we saw some of our big teams not performing as expected, not performing that well even, but some of our smaller teams that we weren't expecting to do as well, they popped off. Yeah, I mean, we had Thomas HD, Malabuka, Mustache, Tayson, mm -hmm. Vino Queasy. They were in the top 10, but they weren't in the top three or top five, and that's what I would have expected from them. They actually had a lot of, even in duos, competing in the first EU FNCS final finals in the top four. I mean, it's incredible. Are you ready to take a look at the leaderboard? Where things stand off those first six games? Let's do it. Let's see. Why not? Let's take a look. And I just want to head straight to number two because Swizzy and Shimoki, they used to compete in the Asian region, but now they are tearing things up in the European lobby. I mean, this is a duo that finished off game number six in style yesterday. They did, victory royale. And they didn't just compete in the Asia region. They won in Asia <laughs> FNCS Chapter 2 Season 8. This is a top tier duo. And yesterday they performed very, very well. As you mentioned, Frankie, closing out with a victory royale. What a performance. I really like the way this duo played. The way they're playing the end game, it almost reminds me of Malibuka and Mustache back in the day. Maybe not quite at that level yet, but the way that they're making pre-edits, the way that they're shooting the same player when they're making those edits, it's a sight to behold. Right. This duo has the eyes on the prize they know what they want and i i'm confident for them mini i could see them taking it home today coming from asia competing on eu for the first time and being in the top spot going to day two of the grand finals mm -hmm. it's impressive i hope they can do well today because i mean a few of their issues have been surrounding uh, storm surge those sort of mid-game rotations they've overextended in a few areas heals materials and stuff so if they can solve those problems today there's no reason why they can't win this is an interesting number for me though with this duo 16 eliminations seven of those came in the game where they did take the victory Tree Royale. So potentially we need to see them pop off if they're going to maintain that position in second place because the top two teams, they book spots in the global championships. But let's turn our attention to Pixie and Della now. These are two who certainly have overperformed above our expectations. Really impressed again with this team. I mean, they're of course landing at Breakwater Bay and they actually made it off spawn at six out of six games and they're just playing so well. They're almost the disruptors of the lobby. We were <laughs> expecting uh, Kwesi and Venom to be up on high ground. More often than not, it was these guys. They were saying, you know what? Let's enjoy the high ground party too. What I find so impressive about this duo, it's they're the highest ranked duo to have 
been the first time competing in the FNCS Grand Finals for EU. This is literally their first Grand Finals and they're in fourth place. A reminder, the record for the highest place duo to be in the first Grand Finals before this was sixth place. Wow. So where they are right now, they're in record-breaking territory. Record-breaking territory. And of course, the territory that they land, Breakwater Bay, both of the teams that are landing there are high ground teams. So whoever comes out of that are more often than not going to be up on that high ground. So whoever comes out, expect to see them on top. I knew there was a reason we hadn't seen Axe Wolves and Paul yes. <laughs> on the high ground because That's they why. keep being taken down in those Osborne battles. But there is a duo who I think we're going to see climb up the rankings today, and that is Queasy and Vino. Queasy and Vino. I mean, this is the duo that had all eyes on them going into day one. We saw them a bit on the high ground, but they weren't really showing the dominance that we would have expected from this duo. But from what we saw with Vino changing his name midway <laughs> through the tournament yesterday to Vino Day 2, you know that he wants to make something happen today. Don't count them out. This is <laughs> Queasy. This is Vino. We've seen Queasy do it in the past. Queasy coming back from so many situations where they weren't too favorable or didn't have too much of a favorable day one. Uh, what springs to mind? is Chapter 3 Season 2 when he played with Hen. It was like 37th. I mentioned it yesterday. They made their way up to 8th. So, Queasy's done it before. Venner's done it before. He's got it in his name. It has to happen, right? Isn't that the rule? If you got it in your name, that day works. two. It's yeah, time. I mean, he's laid it on the line. And Vino laid it on the line, particularly yesterday in the interview. He said he can play high ground, low ground, mid ground. He can do it all. Do you think we're going to see a change in tactics today, given that the high ground is so contested? No, no. <laughs> no, no. That's like, I'll give no, you a one-word answer. No. Queasy Vino, they love high ground. They're going to go for high ground. Yeah, yeah, that's where they perform best. I mean, there's just no chance. Frankie, you're trying to put them off here. Yeah. Right? They can play everywhere, but they won't. It's my first FNCS Grand Finals, guys. I'm here to disrupt proceedings, but I am going to continue now in an orderly fashion. So why don't you walk over with me, boys? Because we have to talk to a FNCS Finals newcomer. But don't let that make you think that this is an inexperienced player because this is Jiras and he's currently third on the standing. So Jiras, first of all, congratulations on a fantastic mm. day one. How do you feel about the performance yesterday? Uh, I think I, I feel very good. Uh, I think we played very well, especially uh, if you remember that we were contested previous day. Yeah, I do you want to ask you also about your partner, Chari? This isn't his first final, so tell me about how that's helped you handle the pressure. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, he, he gave me some tips. I also, like, been on, on multiple finals before, maybe not grand finals, but finals, and, like, I, I think I know how to, how to deal with stress and etc. Yeah, that's great to hear. And of course, it's working so far. You guys are in third place going into today. How have you been preparing for today? Have you been doing anything interesting, VOD reviewing? What have you been doing last night? Uh, I mean, I, I was VOD reviewing for multiple days, uh, for multiple previous days. Uh, we were uh, making drop maps, uh, search plans, loot buffs, etc. That's great so to hear. Is... I heard you were making drop maps, Jurez, so I'm curious. Do you think the off spawn was holding you back from getting first place? day one um, and what are you going to do to change it today uh if, if it was holding uh, me back I, i'm not sure i mean uh obviously it took me two games uh we had two 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 games for zero points so i think we would do better uh, if we were uncontested and i hope we are we are going to be uncontested today uh, uh what happens if you are contested uh we will just win contest right all right well how, where can we find you on the socials before i let you go get ready uh, on Twitter and Twitch, it's, it's G13 Ross. Brilliant. Well, that's not complicated at all. We'll be following you later. Thank you so much. Good luck today. Yeah, thank you. We should talk now about the jury that's at the top of the leaderboard. This is a very experienced couple of players. It's Janice and Reese, and they had such a fantastic start to pretty much every game yesterday. The ideal start to the day, <laughs> I mean, to the weekend. What a start. Day one was incredible for them. An interesting stat about Janice is when Janice has been on top after day one, he hasn't lost. So let's see if they can continue that today. But let's just break down how they've been going about that. Of course, off spawn mid game, end game has been perfect. The way they even play this off spawn here, of course, they don't have too much metal. They actually farm the oathbound chest to get that extra little bit of metal just to capsize on as much of that drop as possible to Carter. Of course, they do have the hammers as well. Right, shockwave hammers in crucial item, especially for rotating. And this duo has been specializing in rotating. They do drop in the northeast side of Breakwater Bay. And you can see after they got their oathbound chest, after they got their loot, their next route is to get these tags. And you can see Reason is doing a great job of that. But it's not like they do it together. They have these shockwave hammers, so they are capable of going to the edge of the zones. If we actually take a look of the map here, the first zone does pull more to the southern side of the map here. So they actually choose to go to the northern 
corner and then look at the duos that are rotating in from Brutal Bastion from the north splits and they split up in two different sides of the corner of the zone so they can tag multiple duos that are rotating in. Yeah, it's just going to be so easy for teams that maybe are a little bit less experienced just to rotate straight in, right? End up towards the Citadel area, but you just get farmed for Surge when anyone's yeah. all the way up on top of that. So they have a different approach. Of course, what do the teams on the northeast side of the map not have? They don't have Oathbound chests. They don't have hammers. So that enables them to have a little bit slower rotates. And of course, Janice and Reason can capitalize on that. And this is where the mid game section comes in because these guys are really, really good at 3 2 1. And what I know is here, taking some tags onto Vino, they're both communicating. Right, I'm going to take a shot in 3 2 1. Boom. They get those tags and they're doing such a great job at being split because, of course, they do have the shockwave hammers. They don't need to be together, uh, sort of shoulder to shoulder to pick up these tags because they can be a little bit more split. They can get back to each other so quickly because, of course, those shockwave hammers are so <laughs> effective for those rotations. Even in mid game it just speeds them up right not even just to get together but also if they want to rotate early or even late they have options with these shockwave hammers and options is what permits you to stay a bit longer here and get a, extra damage extra tax for your storm surge and then focus on your positioning after so it really gives them a little boost yeah what's most interesting about these guys just in every single zone the first and the second zone they're just playing on that edge side they're of course getting as many tags as they possibly can and even i'll just mention it right here this is where they're sort of rotating to and sort of getting to this area right there just to box up and uh, sort of sit behind this hill to pick up as many tags as they possibly can. And this obviously enables them to move further into the zone earlier on because they've got that storm surge done already and you can see in this third zone they're able to rotate in a lot early we just saw it boxing up just outside of the citadel because they got that storm surge done early they were 600 above at this point they could just look back at all those teams that are rotating in from that east side and just farm so much stuff yeah i mean you can see the consistency of this duo from the corner of zone one to zone two to then zone three mm -hmm. many you said it yourself they had more than 600 damage above the storm surge threshold which allowed them to focus a bit more on positioning or focus more on the late game yeah, of course. And then we get to that late game. They can have so much freedom for positioning. Even refarming this brick here. Just even they were inside of this half and half zone, but they decided to hammer onto this brick because, of course, they don't get any metal at their drop. Every single material, especially hard materials, counts for this duo. And the way that they played this end game was absolutely perfect. They haven't actually won too much this season, actually. Uh, in 54 games before this, they only managed to pick up one victory royale in finals formats. Uh, and shout out to Kinch Analytics for that stat, of course. But in finals yesterday, uh, they managed to pick up two out of the four games of first four games they played so they just turned it on when it mattered most i mean they took high ground when it mattered most as it, well yeah. it was in those last moving zones unlike queasy and vino like taking it from half and half or even first moving janice and reason saw an opportunity when the duos were in an engagement and capitalized on it to get that victory royale what do you think happens if we do see a circle forming around the eastern side of the map because we haven't seen this duo need to make that rotation in the grand finals yet I mean, tough. It'll, it'll, you know, I think they can do it. They yeah. do have the shockwave hammer, so it's going to allow them to be able to rotate a lot more freely. So even if the zone does pull further away from them, they won't be able to do the same surge strategies, but they'll definitely be able to make it. All right. Well, I'm hoping now for an Eastern circle so we yeah. can see that theory tested, Dakota, because I wonder if the lack of metal is going to come back to bite them but you know we've got six games to hopefully make that happen and we've got six games to hear the dulcet tones of these two a lovely gentlemen they are your grand final casters they are 11 2k and shio <laughs> Can I say I was slightly <laughs> excited then because I thought I was going to get to stand next to Levin? <laughs> you don't want oh. to, honestly. I, yeah, I, don't, I don't know. Can I try? Try you, it. Am I like a little headrest for you? <laughs> I'm not even a good headrest for him. That's just embarrassing. <laughs> I have to wear higher heels. I'm literally wearing heels today True. so that I could pull that off and it didn't work. Anyway, enough about me and the fact that I'm too tiny to be on this show <laughs> and more about the final six games that are coming up. You guys are still saying Queasy and Vino, I imagine. Well, uh, look, these guys presented some great points. I think when you look at some of the teams that did step up, the likes of Geras, the likes of Janice and Reason, I think there's no doubt that those two are the biggest favorites now after day one. Yeah, the 70 point lead is just kind of huge. I feel like that might just be a bit too much to uh, come to for a lot of the other teams who are, you know, starting off things today. Um, other, other things than that too, a lot of the teams like Shimoki who are in second contested sometimes off spawn. Gears as well, winning so many fights over and over. That might not be the wave day two. Or day two, as Vina would say, is a new day. So let's get this finals back underway with game number seven. And this is it, day number two. We had six games yesterday, Mr. 2K, and we're here today to run it right back. Six more 
stakes so high and one team way far in the lead. Look, I'm nervous and I don't know if I should be, right? If you're the players going into the server today, you know, the nerves are high, the stakes are just so much higher this season. The spot for globals means so much to these guys. Janice in first place playing of reason this season. Not many people expected him to be in this position at this stage, but can he hold on? The pressure's on now and that's what's different about this day. It's no longer starting from zero. Every single team has their role to play. Either you're in the lead and you're holding on, or you want that really big comeback. It all starts right now. Look, I asked whether or not Janice can hold on to that first place position. You don't accomplish the things he has in the game if you don't have the minerals to do just that. But right into the Osborne action, you see Giras and Chari. Giras in, he's hoping they wouldn't be contested off spawn. It doesn't look like they will be. And that is a very scary sight for anybody in the server. Giving these guys a chance to play out all six games is huge. Yeah, this first time we've seen Zyra kind of just completely disengaged, but that says a lot for their surge, that says a lot for their metal too. Lots of free elims, lots of free points over and over for that team. Cheating down, Shimoki and Swizzy also rocking through Citadel. On this first day, we just saw complete control from them. Fast action off spawn, lots of control right off rip. Seems to be a bit more slower for sticking together now. Yeah, I think a lot of people obviously very excited about this team and uh, what they've been showing this season is so impressive. One thing I look at, right, is, you know, when you're looking at Osborne battles, we know the politics, Shadow, that go into fighting Osborne, especially in a region like EU. These guys are earning respect across the region. If they can continue to be as successful as they are, moving into even the seasons beyond this, there's a good chance they won't be contested or spawn, right? They start to build that respect so people don't even want to mess with them. I think the big thing, too, in terms of how they play, a steady goes down off spawn. This is an issue we saw completely yesterday. This was more so mid-game, right? It seemed like they were almost uncontested rocket things through. But the other way around, I feel like CZB, Nipsey specifically got into so many fights over and over again. This time they have a little bit more of a switch up. They have control earlier on. It's Cami kind of in the pressure seat. Yeah, I wondered after day one whether or not Nipsey and CZB would just leave Frenzy Fields and give it up for free. We're seeing here in game seven, that is not the case. Seti being punished and now Kami all alone down below. It's not been the kind of season the Polish players would have been hoping for. In any case, Kami has to just fend off for himself, stay alive. There will be opportunities to do that with different teams coming in. I believe that was Mixon maybe rolling through. Mixon's had so much control on that first day. Third party and fights coming in at the perfect time. The Blasha Rock in day two and continue to just seize control. Another elimination on the CZB under their pocket. Even Scram and Trippin are getting involved here. Everybody wanting to fight at the Frenzy Farms. <laughs> Reason already picking up a few. Forza going down. Seen him put on ice multiple times. Looks like him and Janice will be fine all the way up north. Scram and Trippin had. A little bit of issues when it came to just mid-game rotations overall. Both him, Rest Guard, and Hellfire in similar positions. Alongside Tripper and inside that fifth zone, moving tight gameplay on day one. But for day two, it's all brand new. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. First place is in trouble. What do we have here, Shio? Reason in the midst of a fire, not one yet. Too confident about Gudem gets taken out. Oh, okay, wait, oh. <laughs> let, me, let me calm down there for a second. I was scared. And you got two players on your wall, but then I forgot it was Reason, right? And this is exactly what he does. Two nice elims to start off the game. They're going to have so much space to work with. Blackwater Bay almost there is completely. Slap of shorts. This is our next focus, Taysen and Mustache. Rocking in. And they had a little bit of trouble in day number one. Yeah, didn't quite expect to see them as far down in the standings as they were. I think a lot of people were expecting them to be a very consistent force throughout all the different end games in day one. It wasn't quite that way. The competition is far from over. You can see Ark and Zach actually now who have decided to leave when they were landing yesterday. They don't want to contest over towards the north. They would instead rather up to go towards North Slappy, which I don't think is a uh, a wise option as you're seeing them going off spawn. They lost almost every single game to Gears, yes? Uh, like, it was like 4-2. Sometimes it was almost 2v1, Gears in the driver's seat, just 
winning it out as well. Deoxy Mappy, issues as well, just getting bullied on rotation out of spawn, trying to make it towards the end game and sometimes surviving. We were talking about Shimoki earlier as well. I feel like off spawn, absolutely great the way they just end up working out their game. As a duo towards the end too, I feel like together, they survive the longest. They're, they're always up. I never really see solo clutches so much so from that team. They're always working as a team. Loki and Bad Sniper. I feel like these guys, almost a team that has to maybe shout some of the noise. I've seen Loki having his fair share of frustrations with some of the competition, but you have to lock in, right? It's the final chance for you to show what you can do. You have to lock in, have to stay focused. Can't allow anything from the outside to distract you from that goal. Cade and Coop have been exactly that in these fights that the Ant built. Making quick work of Mr. Savage and ZX. The quick work is a little bit of an understatement because usually it takes days of time. I don't even need to read the statistics. I think this is the longest fight on the map over and over again. It's almost like watching the shark way back in the old days. People just never leave. It does give that sort of vibe, right, doesn't it? Shame we ain't got Mitra here fighting. I'm sure that would add an extra bit of spice, a bit of flavor. <laughs> but I think for Caden Coop, they are very confident in their ability, especially once you've done so well fighting off spawn that that is just going to be a fight we see all throughout the day. I know there will be plenty of Mr. Savage fans hoping they can do a bit better. <laughs> this is interesting, right? De Della and Pixie over here towards Breakwater Bay don't have any eliminations, and I don't see, well, Texas and Axe Force nearby, so these guys may be uncontested all day today. That's going to be really good, but at the same time, I'm wondering, that change, not having that free surge, not having the metal locked in as well, does that change things overall for the duo? Definitely, definitely, right? We've seen how difficult it can be for players landing edge map if you can't get early surge and you get any sort of far zone pulls, things can quickly become a very hectic, hectic game. But of course, if it's anything like yesterday, all the zones will pull towards the north and so they'll be fine and they won't have to worry about that at all. <laughs> no matter where the zones do pull, you can expect Thomas to hit nice shots. And Mount Buka just waiting, but things just seem absolutely barren over here. A little bit of an even zone overall. Everyone gets a chance to play. Not going to be just north, north, north over and over again, like we saw in the first six games. And these guys are barely teetering in the top 10. Issues with their performances, I, I just feel like it, it just is the zone or the way they're attacking it, the way it pulls uh, once they actually kind of get in. Too much pressure around them, too many duos, and as a result, they can't stay alive. They use a lot of their mats, a lot of the resources kind of run out thin before they get to play the game. Yeah, I think part of the problem from what I've watched is that their endgame fundamentals were a bit off. They were able to make it to plenty of endgames once they got there, not quite in sync, not claiming the right space, right layers, as you'd expect from two of the best players. And sometimes their spot is difficult, right? You see you know, where they are based up, right? It was not many opportunities for Surge there, right? So they have their fair share of Surge struggles as well. We had a little bit of a Mustache Malabuka fight, though. That was really fun to watch. Very fun. Towards Very the end. Fun. Former teammates battling it out is always an interesting battle. That is the team to watch that was just on screen moments ago. Janice and Reason. How they're walking forward. It's kind of them versus EU right now. Teams need to step up, close that point gap. They're about 70 to 80 points ahead of everyone. A very big game. And the issue with these guys for the rest of the server, the rest of Europe, is that they don't really go down early, if ever. Yeah. They're usually they're consistently every single game. And I don't think that's going to change, right? So, you know, with that logic, hey, your new <laughs> FNCS champion, Janice and Reason, let's just give them the acts of champions now, right? You'd think so, at least. It's never quite that simple. But it would be very much Janice-like for him to just hold on, steady the ship a bit, not go too crazy by any means, but just make the right sort of place to keep them in it as long as possible. Because you're right, if they ain't going down off spawn, it's gonna be so hard for anybody to close the gap as good as Swizzy and Shimoki have been. 
They're one of those teams that is definitely going to be trying to do that and has the best chances of doing it. Why do you think some of these inexperienced teams that do so well falter on day two? They're going to have the best six games on the first day. Same spot, same situation. Suddenly, they're nowhere to be found. It's, it's, it's such a, uh, an intense situation, right? It, it, you know, you're a team that maybe hasn't quite got the experience on this level, right? Because this is the highest level Fortnite they will play all major long, some of them all their careers long. Yeah. And you look at the leaderboard and you're like, oh my goodness, we're in first place. Oh my, like, oh my goodness, how do we hold on? It can be so, so difficult. A player who has plenty of experience in that regard, though, Thomas HD, Malibuka, we were talking about them just a second ago. We have Taco here on the sidelines to so give us a quick update on what they're doing. Well, Levin, what appears as though Thomas HD is not the only one that's been able to find some success whenever it comes to some surge tags or at least an ample supply of loot early on. Vino as well. He found an airdrop recently, but as far as Thomas HD is concerned, he was able to actually find a purple red eye thanks to unlocking a hollow chest. But unfortunately for Thomas, he hasn't had that much success in terms of actually scouting the area from high ground. Unable to find those surge tags would really limit his positioning and rotations later on. So curious to see how it works out for them. Thank you very much, Taco. I think one of the problems, right, when you're in a spot like where he was positioned is when zone doesn't pull in your favor, right, a lot of teams are going to avoid those sort of areas where they know players are going to be based up. And so the later you stay to look for tags, the more you actually derail your game, right, and make it more difficult for you to get to zone and get the kind of damage you need. What do we have here? What do we have here? Janice and Reason, they know just where the opponents are. I think, at least, I thought for us, they're going to run right past them. No, they're definitely trying to find them, a thousand percent. Janice looking at every single outside nook and cranny. The Bulls keeping calm inside. I don't think either player wants to enter inside the building and the facility. That could spell disaster. They have a long ways to go for zone. No, they definitely know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Reason's really low, though. You know, he has a few splashes still. They found him. First sight of the bull, you have to go all the way back. Looks like Vexy had some shield dots from the chug keg right below. I thought that might have been a storm knock and they get a free elim for themselves without even having to fight. This will be a hunt down though. Funnily enough, I think the Buell tried to do the queasy chug splash play and like almost bait that Vexy was still alive by just constantly chug splashing. Mm -hmm. I think at least we didn't see his POV, so I can't be sure. But if that's the case, it's funny because Janice and Reason did not buy it. They were like, nah, <laughs> you're not queasy, bro. <laughs> Absolutely no chance. Stays the Endelex. Odd one, I believe, to be able to have the Shadow Bombs in play. Classic item that we all love, and they're going to be able to use that to get straight towards the zone. I'm wondering if anyone really has forecast too. I believe we had to have seen a few plays from it. Some rotations, crazy rotations we've seen where people are going all the way across and around the map. Like Weezy and Vino. Off the rails, in the water, suddenly on the south side of zone. Now those, some people might not have been set as to where the next zone is. They're forced to fight, Floki. Hammer straight towards the sky. Redeploy to cancel it out. The user duo up inside the box. Every time I see them, there's chaos that follows all around. They're always in some sort of situation My where... My goodness. They're just trying to hang on to the game by a thread. Really nice shots from Floki there, just to keep them above that surge threshold. Needs to be a bit more alert as the uh, user is going to continue to fight until the very last moment, and they'll make sure that moment is now. This fight's still on a timer. Although they've won just 20 seconds, so they have to move again. And this is gonna be a little bit of a far rotation. Slow on grass, a few mountains and rivers in the way. Scram Tripper. Issues again, trying to find Surge. Elect to go for box fights. It's gonna be fine as everyone starts to move through. Just 100 above is not really gonna be enough. Vortex and Blue Sea, really good at being in these pressure situations, causing everyone to jam up and then leave. Force them to fight and pick up the scraps. Yeah, and I think if you are Scram and Tripper now, as you try to get into zone, you have to prioritize somewhere where you can just get a lick of damage, and this is exactly what Scram won't want, to be in a position where they're taking damage on the way. They only got so many chug splashes. 
to Moki and Swizzy on a different side of the zone, but still a similar problem where they have such a ways to go. Way above on Surge. And so they won't have to deal with that. They just have to focus on getting in, but not many maps to Shimoki's name. That's why he's just going to farm this brick here. Try and max out as much as possible. Very different flavor up in the north. Lots of duels that were down yesterday having a chance to just play as so many players have just left and found a few new spots. Jaggy Bo has to think six for six times. They really want to fight off spawn. Shimoki, Swizzy now have to deal with that extra duel in front of them. Chao on the left as well. Allow the shockwave hammer to kind of make a big boom. But you can see the distance in between all these cliffs. It's so hard to find your next spot that's covered. It requires so many mats to build protection. And the elevation as well, absolutely disastrous for Shimoki. So he's barely taking any damage. But since Shimoki is the front man, he takes that fire over and over again. Zone not doing ticks that are too disastrous right now. He'll be able to possibly get that res, but they have such an obstacle course to get into the zone. Yeah, it's a shame because I think the actual way in which Suzy started to rotate, just sort of using the ridge and going underneath was a nice idea. It was a right idea, but the shockwave hammer <laughs> sent Shimoki right into the sidelines of players who were just able to tag away at him. This is a team I'm excited about this game. Tasting the mustache. This is a really good zone for them. Of course, they land north of Slappy. That is sort of the area in which we're going to be finishing this game. Have the best possible side of the zone as well. There's been all the actions on the top left and the bottom left of the map. They're all the way towards the right. See the reason Genesis way up high as well. They're looking good. They went all the way around. Yeah, they still do need to do a bit of damage on Surge though, Tasting the Mustache. Weren't too comfortable in that respect. And so being on the dead side may cause them some issues later down the line. This is gonna be a solo clutch for Swizzy. That matters a lot. Best placement so far on day one is this duo. And it's kind of uncharacteristic to see one of them down in this point. Not really their norm. Yeah, they're very good at staying together and making it to end games when given the opportunity. And this would be a really unfortunate way to start the day. Right? You always want to start how you intend to finish, especially with the momentum being so high for those guys. We're seeing a difference from Giras and Chari as well. No eliminations under their belt. Usually they're rocking with two and a bunch of damage. We'll see Surge locking again. This time they're not focusing on playing super passive. Slowly inching up, going for a few shots. It's Pixie right next to them with Dilla, but not gonna find too much just yet. They're gonna be all the way on the ground and still finding shots horizontally. This duel is just so adept at knowing exactly where to look. Yeah, but you can already see though, things haven't been too easy for them. They wanna get in that box. A big shot there will move them just above on Surge. Nicely found by Della. Pixie. Needs to regroup though, and you see it's been blocked off there. It's Boaz and Jaggy that have been stopping that, delaying him in getting to safety. Finally, will make his way there. But today they're playing a different game, Shine. We're going to see that from not just them, but from Giras and Chari as well. They don't have the early surge sorted out. They're rotating to a side of the map today that they never had to go to yesterday. They didn't even see Slappy Shores yesterday. New territory, new ground. And on a stage that is bigger than anyone they've been on before, Janice and Reason, they're not looking as shaky in that regard because, again, they've done this. They've been here and they hold the keys to first place. Locking on that side, and I have to believe they must know something other people don't. Giving up their spot and so much control where Surge could be to go to the words, the right side of the map. The zone pulls right on them. Forecast looks good. It does look like. They had the benefits of that forecast augment because they are positioned right in that zone where everybody would want to be. Thomas and Malabuka are trying to plan out how they're going to get there as Thomas looks through this cone, tries to assess the situation. It will probably be a hammer play where they have to double hammer or maybe hammer stop for a second hammer again. Anyone on the north side of the circle as well is going to be much better than the people coming in from the south. You have to traverse through that river. It dips so far down low. You're gonna be using a lot more mats. So you'll see a bunch of people from that south side clashing, trying to go towards the top. Vino and Queasy already in that zone. All they have to do is just bully, shoot, and they're experts at that. It's uh, something they've been doing for many, many chapters of Fortnite now. Mr. Savage and ZX gonna actually get the chance to play a game out. This is very good news for them. Three eliminations already in this one. And 
They have their eyes on the players beneath them. They need to be a bit more careful, a bit laxative in that regard. You see now they start to get sprayed and they just need to hammer out, just need to move out of there and fast. And very fortunate Savage to not really get shot on the way into zone. Left himself quite exposed, but they're in. So many duels we haven't really seen have the best end games on day one. Finally here to have a chance to get their voices heard. First game of day number two. Here's and Chari, not the super space spot or safe spot we're used to seeing them being in. Actually really close to so many other duels before the moving zone really start. Kuzi and Vino kind of hold that high ground. This is like a classic week one, week two type game. This feels just like what we saw from them in the qualifiers. Before the zone even pops, they're already sitting in height. And that next zone pool isn't too bad for them either. So will they be able to hold on? I think most people expect them. They need to be careful. There are players that are going to be looking up towards it. You can see their reason and Janice are just beneath them to their right side. And they had their eyes on. I saw reason scouting for it. Janice though, paying attention to the players down closer to their layup. That's tasting the mustache he took some tags at. Janice and Reason don't need too much success right now. All they have to do is just hold on, make it all the way towards that top 10, keep surviving. So many hammers all around Thomas. It seems like that's just been the theme for this duel each and every single day. Everyone rotating around them, causing them so many materials. Bill and Pixie want that high ground too. They want Queasy spot. Bill's looking all the way up through that cone, assessing when's the best time to actually make the move. We're going into home turf for Queasy, Vino. Janice, Reason, Chari, Gear is falling down. It's at the top five. They will not be able to submit a few more points for the rest of this game. Stash actually looking towards the skies with Taysen as well. They're trying to put on the pressure. His focus is on the sky, but he needs to focus on his layer. That's High Jump Belusi off the strokey, sorry. Let me lose you there. He needs to be careful of High Jump just getting dropped down. But Mustache and Taysen, they're still on the move here. The ground's changing in theme completely. Low grasslands translating to Slippery, high glaciers as we move in towards the snow. Trexer, he gets his feet icy. No match though, so really must be careful. Savage and ZX side by side. Savage in the box, 135. Business as per usual, but his teammate down. It's all up to him now. Cool out from behind. ZX had no idea what was coming, but Savage reacted well enough. But will he have the solo performance needed to start pushing themselves back into this competition standing? He's gonna keep moving down on low, running low on mats as well, and so has to start thinking about a big shot. Taysen is nowhere to be seen here. Malibuka and Thomas revive. Will it happen? Zangi won't let it. He has to hammer out. Vico shot in the back by Malibuka as he goes completely on transition towards the next portion of the game. Low ground not gonna be the best spot to stay in as a solo, though. So many clips in the way. It's gonna be hard to just make it up on your own. Queezy going back up for height once again. Mappy still popping off. He's had so many eliminations so far. Him and Diox are just going completely ham right now. Seti up front as well. Pat Cam, the looks like at the start of the game. 114 to the head, but it's not going to be enough. And again, players just getting caught out from behind. Nobody paying attention to the cues. Zara, Zangi, they're fighting for height though, and the aerialist is going to cost him. He can't quite stay in. And they have an effect on high ground. Queasy and Vino down. Savage picks up Vino, and it is Pixie. That stops Queasy, but Zara's not done. Him and Zangi had a game where they were looking really good on day one, two on this high ground. They don't want to stop, and they have control. All season long, they've had it easily. Nobody contesting, but now Zara and Zangi here in game seven. They're the ones to take it. They're the ones to fight for it. Mustache and Taysen still in this one, the backside of the zone. Not many materials, praying, hoping somebody walks into their sights. And for a moment, I think Taysen just maybe has found what he wanted. A player, Zangi, in fact, from height, has dropped down, been knocked down. And so that's going to be their lifeline in this game. Might have been fall damage, might have been hammers all the way from down below. Malabuka is the one to have that effect again. Is it up against Ristach? What a shot, not the Vanyak. Insane. And he goes straight up again. It's another 1v1. And Malabuka can't slow down. Up in the air. Not this time, though. He gets stopped. Kyrie sends another player straight into the storm. That is Mustache, as he's also last alive. Taysen, he has to connect. He has to hold on. And Mustache will come through to clean things up. 
We said it was their game, their moment. The zone favored them perfectly, and they deliver. Absolutely staying quiet. No mats all the way back up. A resurgence. High ground facing Malibuka again, and this time winning. This duo is looking good today. We wondered when they were going to finally start to show up, finally start to show why they are regarded as one of the best teams, why they came into the tournament as some of the favorites. And here in this game, they did it. I love the way they played this. So down low on mats, right? Back in the zone. We've seen them struggle at times this season in these situations, but keeping their cool, holding their nerve. Look at Mustache here, getting knocked all around the place. But he didn't lose focus, didn't lose concentration. Shia, he got his revenge against Malabuka, right? <laughs> he got a repeat of the 1v1 between him and Malabuka in an endgame. This time, he wins, and this time, he wins the game as well. Game seven goes to Mustache and Taste. And how important is that as well? You know, kind of in the top 10, kind of middling and being the same as everyone else. Homogenous completely look the same as everyone in points. This is the best way to stand out. Yeah, big, big game for them. This is going to be huge for their rise in the standings. The best person to break it all down for us is Frankie. Thank you so much. Uh, but I have to say, actually, it's these guys I'm with right now because Mini Miner and Takata, there is a reason that Tayson is called the GOAT and he's showing that his best days aren't behind him. No, not at all. Tayson's back. <laughs> he's back in business. It's good to see Tayson Mustache finally making it work, right? We saw them trying to get a high ground. They had a little look at it. And I think this is all about experience. This is where experience shows because we saw them looking up to that high ground layer and they thought, you know what? Let's just drop back down. That's a really mature way of playing and a, 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 a way of playing that actually worked out for them. Cool. And it, I mean, what I love so much about this moment as well is, you know, now they're 1-1. One, one. Murstash, Malabuka. <laughs> Malabuka got the best of Murstash yesterday, but Murstash woke up feeling a little bit more spicy today and he showed it. <laughs> by the amount of eliminations he was getting in these last moments, finally getting that last Elim to secure the VR alongside Payson. I mean, with both players up, you can see how dangerous they can really be. It almost felt like a replay of yesterday's Game 6. Yes, the circle was in a very different position, but we did see those uh, the, the potential of their fighting in Game 6, and it feels like they've gone away overnight, and they've just tweaked and fixed those issues, and now they've come back stronger than ever. Yeah, the zone definitely helped them there. Of course, we had so many West zones yesterday. Now, finally, an East <laughs> zone to have a look at. And of course, they made it count. It's one thing getting the zone on your favor, but if you can't make it count, then what is the point, right? But these guys are so experienced. They're very, very good at getting those Storm Surge tags early. We've seen them getting Storm Surge tags on the south side of Slappy. They have been rotating out a little bit later, of course, when they're going to that uh, West side. Now, the zone is on there in their back garden. They can just play and then pop off. Right, and this is a boost in momentum for the duo. I mean, Ooh. taking a look at the standings, they were starting off in the top five but now with that victory royale they're in second place with 315 points this duo is gonna be on fire today it's an interesting one as well seeing thomas and malabuka move up the rankings they were so good at playing for placement yesterday but they're a little bit low on uh, limbs and it feels like now they're starting to find the groove Starting to find their groove, but again, it's back to normal. It's solo clutches. That was the storyline that we set up yesterday. Malabuka, Thomas HT, two incredible players in their own right as solos. And again, they had to bring it all out. Malabuka had to be on the uh, on the ball here because he was again clutching up as a solo. Took out Mr. Savage beautifully on that low ground layer. And this is exactly what Malabuka is so good at. We talked about his solo prowess, his solo ability at getting victory royales. Of course, he held the record, I believe, in the solo victory cup with five wins, only to be overtaken today. Um, but of course, this is a fantastic game on match there actually with, with Malabuka but a fantastic end game for Malabuka and he just shows his experience so well. Is it going to be enough though? I mean in the mm -hmm. qualifiers Thomas and Malabuka they made it to third zone in 18 out of 18 matches but their issue was the late game. They always got split up and ended up having to solo clutch. They're going to have to play as a duo if they want to take that number one spot. Now although he popped off here Malabuka got his big game I want to see more consistency from this duo in the late game both of them being up because I know they're capable of getting that first place spot. I think that we might see them take a victory royale before the mm -hmm. end of today. But there's another duo who got two victory royales yesterday, and they're still showing no signs of slowing down. It's Janice and Reason. Janice and Reason. What a what a start for these guys. Of course, not actually ending up in the best way, but of course, off spawn, they had two eliminations straight off the bat. They had a third one then again. And these guys are making a really, really interesting rotate that we're going to break down in just a moment. They are so good at picking up eliminations off spawn here because even though they were uncontested yesterday, we may maybe raise a few questions as to whether they were going to be contested. Now that they are contested, it's fine. It's back to normal. It's, <laughs> they, 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 they can handle it. It's fine. Reason's too good. No problem at all for oh. this duo. Contest me if you want, they said. Now, 
getting those quick elims. We can see this is actually the rotation they did. So now that they had the storm surge with those three eliminations, they said, okay, instead of going through the zone itself, let's go out of the zone. Let's go as north as we can around the mountains, take some storm damage and get into zone safely. But not only get into zone, let's get to the dead side of zone, the least congested side, because we don't have to worry about storm surge tags. We just want to worry about positioning and conserving our materials and shields. Yeah, so let's take a little look at how they, of course, went about this. This kind of reminds me of Chapter 3, Season 3, when Janice and Vadil won, because Janice was doing this exact same thing, getting to that dead side of zone after getting so many Storm Surge tags early. It's Deja Vu. He's doing it exactly the same way, going into the Storm, which is something we don't often associate with teams. You don't often go into the Storm. You want to stay in that safe zone. But they <laughs> thought, you know what? We know there's loads of mobility on that north side of the map. We know there's plenty of white heels. Let's just go for it. So, of course, they got those three eliminations, able to give them the flexibility to go all the way around. And as you mentioned, Takata, get on that dead side of zone. What a perfect rotate. I mean, you can see when we looked at the map there, all the teams are going to have to be rotating from their POI, from Citadel, from Anvil, from Bastion. They're going to go to the zone and they're going to make that west side of it a lot more congested than the east side that they got to. And they were able to capitalize on that to get to the late game. Unfortunately enough, though, they did not get a big pop off match, but it was enough to maintain that number one spot on the leaderboard. And they just got to do that for five more games if they want to take home the trophy. I mean, at the beginning of the show today, we also uh, asked the question, can they do it when the zone isn't in their favor? We were thinking, you know what? It was all West Zone's East Zone. They can do it. And they proved it. Yeah, I'm interested to see if the eliminations start stacking up for the dominant teams at the top of the table. Because as we've already mentioned, Thomas and Malabuka, they are incredibly good at getting through the first few zones. But then they're only really taking the eliminations when they really, really need to. If they want to take that top spot, they've got to come out fighting. Meanwhile, Jiris, they don't seem, Jiris and Jiro, they don't seem to have that issue. But can they stay alive to get another victory royale? We're going to find out very soon. Any predictions, though? Where do you think the circle's heading in this next game? Look, I think it's going to be a north zone, and I think Queasy Vino are going to take it home. Southeast. Oh, you got to okay. hit first. Queasy Vino as well? <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? Right. Why not? Well, Why I'm not going to say Queasy and Vino, but I am hoping we're going to see resurgence for Seti and Kami, guys. I still believe as we head into game number eight. Game number eight and the difficulty of the lobby, the stakes seem so much higher on the second day. That was very different in my opinion from the games that we watched yesterday, Eleven. So much more action earlier on, this time so slow. Yeah, I think it was a great example of just how much the zones can actually impact how these games play out. I think the first time we see an East zone, a whole different flavor to the lobby in terms of just who's really in there, who's really having a say in how these end games are decided. I want to see more taste in the massage dominance personally. Absolutely. That looked very patient. That looked very methodical. And we could see from their perspective how they reacted to every other duo inside the game. A nice, very, you know, uh, easy, efficient retake towards the end as well. A lot of other duos, I feel like Levin, thrive in that chaos. They're not as premeditated as Taste and Mustache. Yeah, and I, I think as we head into game number eight, the key for a lot of these players will be to not lose your nerve. Make sure if you are one of those lesser experienced teams higher in the standings, you use this game to get back into your rhythm, back into your flow. I think the biggest problem and the biggest hurdle for those teams in that regard will be some of them, like I said last game, they're almost playing a whole different game today, right? They're not having the same circumstances, the same setups that allowed for them to have success in day one. And they're struggling to deal with that here in day two. East side, also just a big environmental test. You have to basically play four different Fortnite games while playing a different game, like you're mentioning. So it's an ultimate challenge. Business as usual in terms of what's happening off spawn for a bunch of these southern teams. This north where there's a big change. Reason down to one HP. Hold on, hold on. And it looks like for the first time taken down, Gudebrook cannot find the finish in time. Siphon there. But Janice has a few shots already. Hold Eight on. HP. Wait just a minute here. Forzen. Mekin and Bay has the loadout too for spam and close range shotgun. This is going to be a very tough fight for Janice to finish. And it's going to be a 2v1 to play too. This was the, 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 the banker. This was the master plan. This was the one that couldn't fail. We said they wouldn't have any problems or spawn. And here we are in game eight. Everything's going to ride. Janice should not be here in a situation where he's thinking, am I going to be able to survive and get reason rebooted? But Forzen and Gudan have completely turned things on their head. I thought this would be absolutely locked in for Janice having trouble, complete trouble now off spawn. But that push, just the sound of the builds, although it's a nice fight from Gruden to start, Forzen cannot stick that res completely. One second off towards the end. Janice oh, will take his time. I want him to use his medicare because <laughs> just seeing his HP so low is, you know, putting me on edge. 
But so, this is a, a, a big, big hurdle in their pursuit of holding on to first place. Pixie's seen the elimination off rip as well. And he's hunting, leaving Blackwater so fast. They're chasing Janice down, trying to find some way to get involved in this early fight. Why is Jaggy as well? Record time of staying alive. Usually this fight is over in a coin flip. Yeah, it's interesting, right? Because Fred and Marius did have a fair share of success against them. But it seems like Jackie and Boaz have actually started off today a bit more confident, a bit more in their flow. Of course, first time FNCS final players. And I think maybe, just maybe that first day where things didn't quite go how they wanted, which may be an understatement, uh, has allowed them to sort of come into today almost carefree, right? Not applying that same pressure they would have applied to themselves in day one. So key, the mental games that go into competing at the highest level of Fortnite. Of course, you've got your tactics, you've got your strategy, you've got your actual skill in the server, but is your mentality on point? That is the difference maker between the best of the best and everybody else in these lobbies. Della and Pixie over here at Breakwater Bay. They're actually going to be in a bit of a fight there against Fawzen and Guden. I'm sure they're wondering, hold on a minute, that's not Janice and Reason. <laughs> it's not normal for them at all. And that changes everything in terms of who has control and who's consistent coming top down into the zone. They're really doing this fight as much as possible. I think that's the switch up. The boys and Jaggy, it's looking to be going the same way though, in terms of who's winning and where the pressure's applied. Fred and Marius will have to work for this. That's just the issue. So much more time invested. They're not in zone. Good track over from Fred. And with a little bit of hesitance, or turbulence, I should say, he ends up winning the fight. I've become a bigger fan of Fred throughout this competition. I feel like game after game, we watched him, and he, he just impresses me so much in just how he deals with these situations in the early game. So consistent. So assured in all of his decisions and all of his actions. Clutch when needed as well. Janice, uh taking a different approach to, I think, uh, what we're going to see from <laughs> a lot of players in this lobby. Going for a quick little swim, cooling off. What does he know? What does he know? What is out there that we don't know about? <laughs> Something out there. Sleeper self that just has, like, another reason inside <laughs> that he can pick up. Don't be surprised if he finds him somehow at the end of this game as alive as a duo. Our winners of the first game, tasting the moustache there. Looking fine over towards Snappy. Gonna be farming up all the plenty of metal that's available to them there at Faulty Splits, though. Faulty Splits has been one of those spots this season, or it's been the spot this season where you just have so many different teams. I wonder what this season would look like if people just decided not to contest there and there was just one team that landed Faulty. I'm sure they'd win every event. <laughs> Such a strong POI, so much loot which is why so many different teams contest. But the problem is when you get all these teams contesting, it becomes exactly what we're seeing here on our screens, an absolute mess. It's not the worst too, especially if that happens. You still might have a chance to be able to get out of that chaos. But then the biggest issue is the zones we've been seeing in EU week after week, even in these finals specifically, so far away from fault. You can't even spend time trying to assess, organize what happens off spawn in your POI. Malabuga Thomas this time taking no chances as they rotate. And on that last game, got pretty deep inside of the game. Still looking for that old sense of control from both Malabuka and Thomas when it comes to either having height or, or just really good claiming of, the, of their mid-ground lair. It seems like right now, they're still just getting tossed completely. They're just, just trying to survive up until the final 1v1s or, you know, the cleanup solo clutches that happen. Surprise today, I think that towards the end of yesterday is this duo on screen, Hydro, Fast Roki. We saw them gaining a little bit of momentum, shooting from kind of the bottom 20s all the way up to almost top 10 now. After that last game, too, affecting a few of the teams that were in half and half in that first moving zone. It's been crazy here in Faulty so far. And the fights are still going down. These guys thrive on just picking one person apart. Every time there's a messy fight, 
Hydro Fast Roki. Preemptual Vultures, maybe that's the term for them. Get to the body before it's, it's starting to be scavenged. <laughs> I don't even know. But they're really good at finishing off stragglers and then moving on from that. I'm looking at this team though on our screens here, Shia. Hell and Refs. Both adding the Nada to their name. That's a homage to Kanada over in NA East, who has been very impressive this season and very impressive yesterday as well. Maybe hoping they can access some of his uh, skill level today. What is the Kanada skill they're trying to possess? Just, what are they trying to inject? Just absolute boss. <laughs> Kanada's a big dog. He, uh, doesn't play around in these lobbies. That's true. Big sea level energy. I think this just becomes a survival game on who can stick together so far all the way towards that fifth zone. It gets so tricky once we get to that third. So many people having surge issues inside these finals. The theme of the games today, too, just so different from that first day. We were surprised looking at the leaderboard. What are all these names? What happened to the top Titans who should be top five? Why are there people on the second page in 17th that should be in fourth, sixth, or eighth? How much of the newer teams now? Because of the change in language of these finals, because of just the issues of translations of the first seven games and now all the way to seven and eight, they might start to fall. Floki Bass Sniper were very active in that day one, looking really good. I kind of getting at least out of spawn. But then also kind of succumb to that third, fourth zone issue. Eight people rotating with you. How do you survive? I think a lot of that volatility, though, is down to just, you know, what we've seen this season in terms of the trends of the meta. And the point format's obviously a lot different to what we've seen previously. So you're rewarded a lot more for having those one-off pop-off games, which we know are very possible. The use of shockwave hammers and how players are using them to just bounce all around in end games and cause so much chaos for some of those more consistent teams. Consistency is a big thing. You need your duo alive, though, so let's check in with Taco to see what's been going down in some of these early spot fights. Well, Shio, as far as Giannis and Reason are concerned, Giannis, fortunately enough, was able to actually get the reboot successfully there for Reason. And despite the fact that this duo struggled a little bit early on with that off-spawn contention, the fact that Reason is now back in the action is awesome. But at the same time, this is at Breakwater Bay. This duo has a pretty long rotation before they can actually get themselves safely into zone and look for optimal positioning. And it's going to take them some time to build up the resources and looting around the area. So we'll see just how far they can go. Thank you so much, Taco. So the last time we were watching Janice, he swam off the island, went on an adventure to a different one, found the DNA of Reason, made a clone, and now he's back. That's my headcanon. That's how, that's how things went? If, there, if they made a movie of this FNCS, yes, that, that, that would be based on a true story, you know? Okay. Well, like Taco said, they have a way to get to go to zone. They need to get themselves some loadouts. And they ultimately need to start thinking about how to deal damage as they move down as well. Missed out on a lot of time to be good on Surge. They're ultimately playing behind the rest of the lobby. You think about it like a race. Everybody is trying to run to the finish line. These guys are way behind. They have a lot of catching up to do if they're to make anything of this game. But the big thing with them again, which we will always highlight for as long as they have a lead, is that just holding on, just staying alive in games and picking up placement points here and there. Does wonders for them. Here they are on our screens now. Back into the safe zone at least. Well, not safe zone, sorry, but not in the storm. They need to run to the safe zone, which is what they're going to be doing here. There's a team positioned in front of them up on that hill that they need to be a bit more aware of. I think Janice did see the builds then, so he knows they're there. Biggest trouble for them, though, is that usually they have Surge kind of figured out. Usually they have a few fights off spawn and some shots. They move a little bit early, but because of just trying to get Reason's card, get him back up. Janice has shot no one, 248 below. Gonna need that desperate box fight, it looks like. Wouldn't be surprised if they maybe even try to make a sneaky play on that team on the hill. Try to get a free beam, a free tag. Nebs and Pink over here towards Frenzy. Zone a bit more favorable to them in this game. And we did see a huge game five from Pink and Nebs that pushed them into the top 10. They did fall out of position a bit after that, but there is still hope for this team in the competition. 
They have to deal some damage though. 27 above surges. Not where they need to be. Benzi feels turning from something. That's usually barren to a complete community. Epps caught again. There's another 50 pot that's traded for no damage whatsoever. A lot of the times people will over peak, look to trade a few shots and use their shields. That's about a hundred or two thirds of the 50 pots that Nebs has and nothing's happened just yet. Dealer and Pixie. 250 below. Uncharacteristic. I feel like just trying to go for that Janice hunt at the start interrupted their game plan, but that means JJ2 also looks weak. Usually that's not the issue. This man is under control of the situation. Could be a trap though. 120 from Dealer looks good. He's not stopping. Picks it right behind him. Walls dropping from shotgun shots over and over again. Nothing in the chamber, though. He was forced to just use the spray. A team looking in from the safe zone also providing pressure. And so many shots now. Dila has to be careful. It's an all in. And Pixie's got nothing. Pixie so low on HP now in this fight. Glub Sheet doesn't have JG2 anymore. He was able to return fire. But Pixie, Della taken out. Look, you, you mentioned a fight where they were looking to try and pick up Janice earlier on. They wanted to take that fight because they're used to fighting, right? They're not used to not being contested by Axe Force and Vortexes, and it's causing them these surge issues we're seeing here in this game. Reason and Janice were in a similar position to what they were in, but they're handling things a lot better, able to outheal. They have a shield kick here, they have a bunch of shields. They have a win condition now, too. We know the loadout for Janice, so many. Chuck splashes to be able to use and go for these fights. How do they get back into this game? Who do they pick apart to get the hammer? We'll see just here in a second. So Janice had that one Elon Musk one already. They go for Flodax, who's trying to heal or do something in these boxes. A complete dive in. Split. And in a second, it's easy for the duo. They now look like they're better even than they were off other games off spawn. So many maps to be able to use. Janice already has the loot from the entire duo, and now they picked up a few more from Flodax. Still very much in this game. They just won't allow themselves to be taken out of this race by any means. You see the investment from so many duos, some who land here, Neb's in pink. Kind of their home, but at the same time, I don't know if rents got higher, they have like no mats, no resources, no money, they're broke. How are they gonna move in this zone? 15 builds in total for, for Neb's, not sure how many. Pink's on. Versace and Taysen, though, look to be landlords in this sense. Rich and still looking for damage all around. Taysen taking a bit. If Jazz and Reason get to a good part now, I mean, they're once again undetected in the way they move. Everyone in front of them is looking at someone else. Isn't that Analyst to the left? Finally sees him. Oh, that's about what Puka looks like. He's finding a few already in the feed, but then and Reason are kind of getting away. It was daylight robbery here. Here's Malabuka, yeah, on that north side. Gets one half of that user duo down. Him and Thomas picking up a few on the way. Yeah, now they can just move into zone pretty easily. There's a bush here. It isn't quite in zone. I'm sure they would have wanted to sit in that, maybe trade some tags if possible. Reason picks up Vortexers as well. These guys are climbing the ladder. Get rich quick. That's exactly what they've done in this game. Turning things completely around from a position where Many people would have thought it was over. Not actually a threat in this lobby. I mean, this is a very different situation for Janice and Reason specifically. Marius might be a gift to them as well. He's <laughs> creeping up behind them. I'm sure they'll get the sound cues they've heard him. Yeah. So they'll be aware he's walking in here. Oh, he's so low. And that's Another! Easy. Three for them. Refill on splashes. A lot of mats, max and metal now for Janice. The choice of impulses too. Reason goes in. Upgrades a few rarities. They're looking so good. That's too easy. It's too <laughs> easy for them. You can't give them that much room. You can't give them that much opportunity. You wouldn't even be able to tell the game started the way it did for them. <laughs> right, this game started with Reason completely out of it. Janice swimming way towards the north of the island. Looking like he'd given up and now look at him. Now if I'm Janice, I'm running a thank you note to the players off spawn for taking out Reason and making the game go in this way. Thing is though, it's not gonna be completely roses for the team. Janice Reason are used to having control like Mustache and Taysom right now, like Weezy and Vino usually up high by themselves, knowing exactly where to go towards the, towards the next moment in the game. Mustache and Taysom now are, are looking to, to be voices 
Heard in the server. You can certainly be heard from where they sit. Way up elevated in that zone. Kami Vanyak. You've seen them making it to Endgame's rather consistently. Unfortunately, we've not consistently seen them together as a duo fighting things out. Very important to move early here, too. Lots of water within the next zone. You want some of that land that's claimed right on the shores. Otherwise, we've seen how intense some of that focus gets. And they can't quite claim that land. There's really a team position in front of them. That's and Shimoki. So they're probably going to have to build up above them if they want to get any of that space. And Shimoki and Suzy will be sitting here waiting. They have their edit opened up. They have their eyes on it. And so the moment Kami and Vanyak peek out here, if they don't use enough builds, they will be punished. Start to come in, Shimoki getting ready. Yeah, they're just trying to wrap around. They don't even want to deal with it. Using that tree as line of sight, block their cover. I would have wanted to see Shimoki and Suzy almost break that down. Give them a better line of sight of things. But Vanyak and Kami are able to just make it in. A bit of damage taken. Oh, no, but it's not like this. No, oh, no, hell nada. Not like this. <laughs> All around the map. Issues for a few teams. Just saw Hanada pick up one elimination inside the feed, too. Him and Refs looking good on pressure, but maybe losing track of time overall. We'll have to jump in now, and no one really wants to move forward. Everyone just kind of congested side by side. That taxes the match even more. At least Hanada here will have room to actually play his game. 350 damage above Surge. Chari and Gears finally looking like they're normal. It took a game, but they're isolated. They're right by themselves. Look at the zone you have to rotate, right? It's uh, going to be a tough one to get into zone. It's going to be so congested there. The silver lining is, of course, they have a shockwave hammer. They also kind of just have a free lane. On the right side, there's a river separating them and all the other pressure. They could possibly just go right by as everyone's focused on box-to-box -box fights. This entire length of an island strip right now is just looking at each other wall-to-wall. The problem is, though, when they get into zone, there's going to be so many builds there, and they don't have a lot of mats. I think zone's just all water as well, so this is going to be tough. Mixon actually falling down. Watch the pressure on the back against the wall. We know that Nevs might be low on mats right now, so they need this fight. Yes, absolutely. No wood left. Half on metal and brick, even less so. They do pick up a few eliminations. Should almost be good with the low on surge, too. This is absolutely drastic for almost every single team, and the entire zone is aquatic. There is no land. And you just have to hold on to your builds. If you get broken out by a shockwave hammer, you're going to find yourself floundering in the water. Reason, Janice, they managed to find a spot in the zone. But how will they very survive? Nice spot. They picked up Cammy as well. <laughs> Look at their maps, though. Okay, now that's good. They finally have the full siphon coming in. There's like a down payment to stay in here right now. You need at least half match completely Ooh, full. Gotta be careful. Reason drop down, hammered out, but that's straight into high water. Emergency, big emergency. And you see the reaction from Reason. It's just to get out of dodge as quickly as possible. Play for yourself, play as a solo. We can regroup with Janice in a second. And that is what they'll do. Crazy and Venal, though. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> it's just like a water park vacation. No issues with them whatsoever. And the zone will be pulling all the way back to land. And everyone having to use so much mats to get across the water. Even if you have a shockwave hammer, one bounce alone isn't going to quite get you to zone unless you're way up on the north. And so you will have to use a bit of mats, most likely. And that just makes it so much easier for those teams on that side. Queasy, Veno. Look at that taste of were not too far beneath them as well. So they could very much have a good game here. Everyone knows if you're on height right now. All the duels below you are an absolute shambles. Look at the view they have. They're taking shots. That's Janice and Reason they're taking shots at. They've put them to a stop. Reason has to stop and build for a moment. He can't just get in. They'll look for more pressure on the left side, eyeing where they need to be in the zone. Alabuka Thomas doesn't look like they're in absolute trouble, but still lots of people in the boxes around them. What a rotate from Alabuka in between all the belts. Thomas is not going to be with it completely for now, just slightly ahead, but they'll find each other. Careful, They're not sitting on comfortable ground by any means. Gearass and Chari, they're desperately trying to find something. They need their first elimination of the game to be sometime soon. Not able to stop that player from hammering away. Reason and Janice, they fall here just outside of the top 20. Chasing the moustache though, they keep moving. They find a refresh and that is so crucial. Those maps are going to go such a long way for them as they now start to make their move as the zone will pull again. Savage and ZX also inside this game have one of the best positions to be able to play. From low ground, Shimoki and Swizzy have to catch up, but the most important thing is they're together. Double hammer there too, Shimoki. A very good adjustment. 
He's gonna be right beside Swizzy once again. He'll be able to keep firing up. She though, kind of almost by himself. He's got no max. They have to go for an all in. They have to find him fast, but a player right behind them. That's El Nala. Still in this game. He was looking like he was gonna be out a couple of minutes ago, but now he finds two free limbs. Savage, ZX, do they know they're gonna have to start rising? The zone's moving up, everybody has to elevate here. Trouble in Paradise shoot for Taysen and Mustache. Had so much control. Now, Mustache down, oh, Taysen to go for this clutch. I don't see a hammer though, so there has to be manual movement interrupted towards the backside. Tires punctured. This vehicle, this behemoth is slowed down. He might have to get that thing off the road and just sit for a moment, refuel. Queasy Vino, it's so easy for them though. As everybody squeezed beneath the zone, underneath this hill, they can just chill from above. Savage trying desperately to stay alive. ZX nowhere to be found to help him. He just has to play as a solo. And still nobody really causing a challenge to Queasy and Vino. Two thirds of the lobby filtered out by one clip. Nemp's barely just surviving. Vino and Queasy have not stopped shooting for the last minute in a row. Nemp's finally making it in. Somehow with Pink alive, they made it through that great filter. ZX and Savage, it's just ZX. He's finally down. Four healers for the duo though. They're looking good. Malibuka and Thomas somehow have survived that chaos too. They were on low for quite a hot minute. Five different duos now alive. They go all the way down towards the left off the cliff, have to try to make it back. Zangi's also somehow camouflaged, makes it all the way to low, but Queasy finds his head too. They tried to go for high last game. There will be no thought about that now. All it is is thinking about staying alive. Zara needs some mats. He needs Zangi to build for him. Things starting to cool down for a second, but that just gives Queasy and Vino even more time to finish the master plan. Pink eventually falls. He gets taken out by Thomas. And Nebs now is a solo, also gonna fall at the hands of Zangi. These two though, they've controlled the low ground. They've dominated everything here. They're siphoning all the Elims for themselves. Squeezing now, no materials whatsoever. So this might just be the Thomas show in just a second. Shiboki exposing himself on the left side. Zara finally going down. Queasy has some time to delay and a few builds to hide behind. Vino finally looking in, but once again, they have no control. Vino's the only one with mats to be able to play. Thomas has picked up both eliminations. A tree in the way, could be able to split a few mats for Queasy to use. It's final 2v2 and Malibuka is going up for it. A little bit of control, but look at the cost for it. A big shot. He's gonna get it off. Vino taking the damage, but Malibuka will go down. They find each other once again. The same tile to use. Queasy's now building for Vino. Thomas HP advantage. Queasy from the backside. And what a win. What a way to do it as well in a game where everybody seemed to be struggling with resources. Even at the end when they had nothing left, they still made it work. Mantling around the different builds and connecting in every single shot at the end. A big win and a second win now for this team. It looks like they were like blinking the brain almost, right? One player out of match, they're able to follow that well right behind them. Still providing pressure. Vino, the leader when he had that mad advantage and then immediately switching to the follower, looking for every single shot. A great one hit of the Malibu up top. That was just absolutely glorious. Yeah, and you see there to finish the game, Queasy at the end hitting the crucial shot onto Thomas was so, so huge. That's his teammate. They play with each other all the time. But in this <laughs> moment, there are no friends at all. You have to get it done. And connecting, Thomas didn't even see it coming. It's like they have an X-ray active to know the field exactly to the pixel. Queasy and Vino in control in both days. And look, we were all the way at the south of the map. This is another game now where zone is nowhere near the north, <laughs> but no problem for Queasy and Vino. They just win the game. That was a very stressful game for all of you, I feel like. So many mats costed on that water, and then they have to rotate and go through a great filter. Uh, I need Frankie's reaction. I need to see the analysts. That was just insane. It was insane. And you know what else was insane? The fact that Takata called this victory royale just before game number eight kicked off. I said, who's taking it? <laughs> and you said with complete confidence, Crazy and Vino. How did you know? Look, I called it. Also, many agreed on the side I as agree. well. We, we both called yeah. it. Uh, messed up a little bit on the zones, but what matters is they got the victory royale. Queasy and Vino, we know they want that first place spot. We know they want to lift up that trophy. So this victory royale, it's one step of the way. And what's most interesting as well is they actually did it in the same zone yesterday. It's a very similar sort of uh, zone they actually did it in, which is so far away from their drop spot. And again, it's deja vu. They've got a victory royale from high ground in that exact <laughs> same zone and this is just perfect stuff from Queasy and Venna. What I find interesting about the way that Venna is playing this as well is he actually picked up one of those tactical assault rifles midway through this end game and he actually just uses that to keep applying the pressure down below. I think this was the elimination where he actually managed to pick it up and this was so crucial in applying all of that pressure. We can see it here using all of that light ammo to make sure that nobody down below even stood a chance. Queasy with the light ammo or Vino with the light ammo, Queasy That's the with one. the medium ammo, splitting it up to make sure they can shoot for as long as possible. I remember 
Shio said it, they were raiding from above for over a minute yeah. on all the players down below. And it seems like they kind of enjoy rotating far from the POI as now, like you said at Mini, the second time they've got a victory royale when it's a southern zone and they drop north. So I don't know what's up with this duo, but they like high ground and they're doing it right. Do you think they thrive when the high ground is at its most complicated? Because the fifth zone was in the water, so everyone's using their materials. If you don't go high, you're going home early in this particular game. And because they have got that experience, perhaps that's what really gave them the momentum going into those final zones. Yeah, you absolutely hit the nail on the head. When those teams down below don't have materials, they're having to expend them, the high ground team's always going to benefit. Let's talk now about Malibu and Thomas because this is a duo that, as we keep talking about, are great at getting towards the end game. But when they get there, they're not always going all out for those limbs. We know that Malabuka can pick up those names, but Thomas, <laughs> hello, in that game, he was on fire. Yeah, it's back to normal for Thomas, really. <laughs> Realistically, we've seen Thomas do this before. He is such a talent, especially when he gets to these end games. They have been able to pick up eliminations, not quite as many as before because they have been solos. But now they're together. They're shoulder to shoulder. They're able to pick up eliminations left, right, and center. And oh boy, did they have such a good end game to cast it. Look, it's not common to see Thomas miss and that the <laughs> damage that they can unfold onto their opponents in these late games when they're up as a duo, both Malabuka and Thomas. I mean, we saw it here. This was a two versus two with two of EU's Titans, and it was exactly what I expected. Exactly what we expected. Low ground versus high ground. Quite possibly two of the best players on the <laughs> low ground versus two of our best players on the high ground. I don't know what it is about Queezy and Venom. They're so good. Whenever a team hammers below them, whenever you're on high ground, it's so easy to get chopped out by hammers below. In those final moments, Queezy and Venom are actually just so good at getting that first damage shot off to win that every single time. I don't know how they do it. It's incredible. They do it every time, though. They and do. now the leaderboard is looking a little bit more like I think I would have expected. <laughs> Tasted and Murstash in third place. Malibuka Thomas in second. Janus Reason still holding that first place. But let's look a bit about Tayson, Murstash, how they performed in this late game, because we saw them popping off. We did. We also saw particularly Tayson popping off. Now, we talk about a Murstash, of course, being the fragger of this duo, getting all those eliminations. But let's just talk about Tayson for a moment. Look at this. 15 teams remaining. He managed to stay alive for so long. Obviously, those, uh, courtesy of those chug smashes in the zone. But this is a perfect way to play this. Very, very sneaky. Not having to expend too many materials. A few zone pullbacks definitely helped him here. But he was able to pick up eliminations. Tayson is back. He did it in the last game. <laughs> He's doing it again as a solo. He's like, you know what? I'm just going to become Fragger Tayson. Why not? Let's do it. We should talk about what could have been a very sticky situation for Janice and Reason, because Reason had to be rebooted. And statistically, it's very unlikely for a, a duo that has to, to reboot to actually get to the later stages of the game. But when we caught up with them later, both players were still in the lobby and they were picking up a limb. Yeah, they weren't just in the lobby. They were thriving. <laughs> they were picking up eliminations, which is exactly what you need to do. Because, of course, you are back in the storm. You don't have that storm surge tags early on. You also, of course, don't have the loot that you would have benefited from if you didn't reboot. But these guys just showed exactly what you do. Pick up the refreshes. They absolutely had amazing materials. Chug Smashes, what more can you want? Look, they didn't get the victory royale, but they've been holding on to that first place spot right now with 408 points. The gap between first and second, though, it is closing more and more as the games go on. So hopefully, if Genesis and Reason want to hold that number one spot, they're going to need a bigger match than these recent ones. They need a win, really, don't they? They well, need they, another one. They need to not have to do a reboot. Yeah. But kudos to them for still managing to pick up some crucial elimination and placement points in what was that difficult situation. But hopefully the zone for them will fall in their favor because we have been having these delicious southeastern circles. This is what we wanted to see. I wonder if it's going to fall in that direction again, as yesterday was so north dominant. What would you like to see, though, from this next game? Swizzy and Shimoki, they had a solid last game. We didn't see them in the previous game, but they had a decent last game right there. I believe it was third or fourth, potentially, where they were together as a duo. They are so good when they get to that end game. I mentioned it earlier, kind of like Mustache and Malibu, when they used to play together. So if they can get to more consistent end games, they could break into that top three. I'm riding that train. I'm riding the Swizzy and Shimoki train. I love to see them performing so well for their first time on EU yeah. and first time in the EU Grand Finals coming from Asia. I'm really excited to see if they can do it. And I believe that they're going to get the VR this game. Well, choo-choo, boys, because it is time for game number nine. There are not many more games left to finally make your mark in this major. 
it is so exciting to be here right now because not only do we have some of the best players, the reigning champion Janice currently holding first place with his teammate Reason. We have the three favorites for the season coming into things in the positions after him. Jason Mustache in the business, Thomas HD Malabuka. It looks like everyone's predictions kind of rose off the social media pages right onto the leaderboards, right? Top four is the top four. Who would have expected to see Thomas and Malabuka sitting in second place? We get to hop right back into all the action and see which one of these teams is going to do their best to catch up. The lead today started at 70 or something points. And we're down to about 20 point lead for Janice. Things are quickly coming into a big, big competition for first place. Has to do his best to hold on now. This is not FNCS. <laughs> it's just so much fun to see when you're a consistent team and one game has a big issue. One game goes wrong. You turn that 70 into a 20, turn the 20 to a negative 30. Who knows? You might not be first anymore. You're second looking up. Vino Queasy still trying to climb back. That is in pink also working it up all the way on the boards. So many teams all the way from 15th now inside that top 10. This has turned into a classic EU day. That first day was still surprising, Levin. We were like, hmm, could this be different? Is this the one? Same old EU. Same <laughs> old EU. The cream always rises in this region. Malabuka, Thomas, Mustache, Taze, and Queasy Vino. Those were the three teams everybody had as their top three in some sort of order coming into the finals. Janice, Reason, the ones currently holding on. And then in fifth place, right, another very exciting team, Shimoki, Swizzy. These guys, a team from a new land coming into EU, performing so, so well. This is one of my favorite top fives we've had in the EU FNCS final. And of course, there's still so many more Fortnite to play. We're not done yet. Not at all. And the big thing too, past the top five as well. Day one is not too far away. Usually, we see that first day's effects completely gone, lost in the bottom 40 maybe, or in the top 30. We have Giras and Carey right there in top six, very close by in points. The day one almost pseudo leaders, right? I know Janice and Reason were in the business so far ahead, but they were actually setting pace more than anyone else. They were the surprising duo that came out of the gate and had that thrown sometimes also have a chance to cement their names as basically becoming legends of their own right, Pablo Wingu and Bevies, who I still think have the most impressive performance out of the week so far. The week two absolute hurricanes haven't found their aggressive angles to be the most successful inside the grand finals. But it feels like at least in this game, they got a little bit of a spring to their step. Yeah, they've not quite found the form from previous competitions, but never say never. It's not over till it's all said and done. Stopping the tracks for now. The Siptos with the name change too. Dark Desi. <laughs> Everybody trying to access the inner hero or inner villain in this case, right? <laughs> Going to the dark side. What does that entail for his performances and the way he plays today? Looks like Malibuka and Thomas HD did something with the dark side. Looking sinister in these first two games. They're finding the spots they love to be in. They've climbed so far. What was it, ninth or seventh? And now all the way second place? 20 point deficit? Huh? Did we miss a game? <laughs> we, we, we must have missed something. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how <laughs> this has happened. But I'm not complaining, not one bit. These guys are so, so eager, so, so hungry to show off what they can do and to prove to people. Thomas HD, one of the greatest Fortnite players ever, still yet to win an FNCS. That is going to mean everything to him, to all of Denmark as well, to all the Danish fans cheering him on. And he's very, very close to making that dream a reality. Just has to play three more games of Fortnite. The zone's a classic one where Janice and Reason can continue to rain terror on the rest of the lobby. And at the same time, Puzi and Vino can look to control high ground once again. Go for a win. It's the same zone that people on screen are seeing right now. The likes of Perceive, Fasroki, Hyjo. A lot of the players who are 20th to 30th in the lobby are having trouble with in terms of rotations towards the next portion of the game. The rest of the map has to move. And that east side can change so very fast. Rivers on the way. The mountain, the snowy region, you have to make adjustments fast. Could be different game after game. The one thing that's the same every time 
is Anvil Square. Just saw Coop with his dual rock in. ZX down now. That fight's going on over and over again. Thomas and Malabuka, business as usual as well. Never really interrupted in their looting path on this north side. Yeah, these guys are consistently making it to end games. It's just about what they do there in end games. Coming into the finals, the question was, would they be able to stay together as a duo? Or are we going to see them constantly having to make solo plays? That's been a problem for them in end games this season. Last game, they did a great job of sticking together all the way up until the end. The way Malabuka just kind of survives the swallow all the way to worse. That spot is just so impressive. So Della and Pixie though, right? They aren't able to fight at source and Vortexes off spawn. And so they will be very eager to get this fight out of the way against Steno and Lucia here. Because this early surge could work wonders for getting them back into contention. This was a team, by the way, who coming into today, we thought maybe had a chance, an outside chance, albeit, of winning the whole thing. But not having early storm surge is really hindering them. It's also not just the numbers for them, it's not just the surge, it's kind of the rhythm, right? You want to at least have that fight go down. So they're going to be in their natural element in game number nine here of Europe. But the numbers ultimately do matter. It's the most at the end of the day. They do have to land their shots whenever they can. Lucia able to actually just sneak right by. And the big difference between this and the fights they were having at Breakwater yesterday is that they were up against Axel's and Vortexes who they'd land before them, take shots at players who don't even have any loot. This time round, they're up against the Danes Lucian Center, who they have loot, they have mats, they have shields. Look what Lucian's got in his inventory. This is a much more difficult fight than they're used to. Very scary. And Lucian Seno, I think they've been under such pressure in the weekly qualifiers up to this point as well. They've taken so many off spawn engagements. They've learned to actually just de escalate and put that pressure down, slow down the fight entirely. And with you mentioning the way Pixie and Della fight off spawn. As soon as things get slow, these guys are at a complete disadvantage. So go for the fight. The rhythm's there. They got no numbers on the board. And they have to go all the way back to Breakwater. I'm not sure exactly what they're going to do at all. Pink and Nebs. This is a team that I'm very interested in because they've sneakily kept themselves in and around that top 10. They're currently in there. They're holding on. You were surprised by the fact that they were able to survive as long as they did last game. Yeah. Things are finally starting to click for this team in a season where they haven't been able to really get anything to fall for them. I think this might be one of the most underrated performances we've seen in an FNCS from a duo. I know they're not all the way towards that first or second place right now, but the way they're surviving game after game, the way that they have absolute max pulls when it comes to zone, and they're still thriving, hammer's being used perfectly, down on Surge a lot of the time, but they find fights within the Storm and then still make it in in the most congested sides. It has to be reviewed. Zara and Zynga as well, specifically, I think they were just on screen, have also done really good cha a really good job at surviving and actually having some control when it comes to Endgame, which is very interesting. Yeah, I think a lot of people counted Zara and Zangi out, right? I think a lot of people would have expected them to... Uh struggle in these lobbies, but they've definitely been a, a presence in end games, right? And that in itself is super impressive. Mr. Savage still alive in this game. ZX not, and so maybe we'll see a similar story to what we've seen from a couple other teams where you're scrambling to get your team back in the game and then trying to play catch up. At least today they actually get to play at all. I think two games in a row now. We see them low ground in end games affecting a few duels left and right. So at least some happiness compared to the number one. Flodax, the reason that reason got to play that last game. Dive inside the box, he was the one to give away that siphon. Him and Rifty, this user duo, kind of the main ones to focus on when you look at fights within the mid game. They're just so scrappy from start to finish. Yeah, right. you said that a couple of games ago, every time we see this user duo, they're in some sort of fight. <laughs> they love the action. This is interesting, because I know Della and Pixie want action. But action against who? Janice and Reason on the defensive right now. They know. The, it's not shown on broadcast, but they're keeping track of how much surge they have. It's absolutely zero right now in terms of the shots they've taken. So now, up against the first place team in the lobby, Della and Pixie are looking to all in a fight, it looks like. And look how far away 
zone is. They have a minute to kind of finish this up. Already affecting the way Janice and Reason want to play this game. I know those two don't want to be here. They'll have Pixie might have bitten off a bit more than they can chew. Pixie already losing a lot of the shields, and now it's Della who can't even find one pickaxe on the wall. This is one of those really tough awkward fights because they committed a lot to that, right? And so for Pixie and Della to not be able to clean things up, Janice and Reason going to leave. Janice and Reason, they didn't really get tagged there, so they didn't use much shields. It's kind of like they're just driving. You know, someone in front of you does something crazy, and you're like, I don't know what type of day that person's having. That's kind of that's kind of insane. Anyways, <laughs> let's keep playing the game. Pixie and Della absolutely shifted though in the way. <laughs> Their brains must be thinking, what do we do now? That's two teams where there haven't been a, a little bit of a chance of a fight that goes our way. And of course, after the way they were running away, right, you've got to wonder what Janice and Reason's situation is on Surge, right? That's why Pixie and Dello are so desperate to fight them. Thankfully, we have Taco here on the sideline to help us out and give us that update. Well, actually, Levin, keeping a close eye on Giannis and Reason, we actually see Reason optimizing to go for clearing out some of these oakbound chests. Unfortunately, hasn't been able to actually secure a shockwave hammer despite opening two of them. But the one thing that helped them out with Pixie and Della is the fact that they've already managed to secure some of these storm surge tags earlier on with those red eyes. So instead of forcing the fight, they chose to disengage because they've already got what they're after. So they're going to optimize for positioning instead. Great insight from Taco there in terms of the way the early game is going on. Kind of scary that after two ultimate chests, these guys don't have hammers though, because we've seen the way that influences their game. They're able to get towards those next zones, the moving zones, so much easier for them. Have to adjust now. Yeah, at the start of the season, it was almost a guarantee, right? Well, obviously, with all the things added to them, that probability is just a bit less. Janice is bringing up Flodax again. <laughs> Hopefully trying to find him. Yo, can you sort me out, mate? <laughs> I'd love a hammer right now. Short games was always seem to find themselves with or without hammers surviving. I feel like a lot of the duels in the lobby want to take control or, or just be away from others in their own space. These guys kind of thrive in the shadows of chaos almost. Whenever there's a fight, they're on the wall next to players, but not actually engaging as much. Trying to just take damage and get out. It's really interesting. Kami and Vanyak is what we saw on day one. Amazing performances. All the way from Vanyak almost every single time. The solo legend of you, it feels like. It's the reason they're just relatively high, just outside of the top 10, it looks like, uh, on this day. Yeah, I think uh, you made the point, right, where Vanyak's become that guy, right? This is a guy that has, like, a really funny joke, so everyone always wants him to say the same joke. <laughs> it's like, hey, Vanyak, man, can you do a solo clutch for us, please? I'm sure we'll get one today. Vexy and the Buell, though, they had a really good first day and have been a bit quiet so far in this one. But now getting a bit loud, I think getting a bit loud, the Buell actually gets taken out there. But he does have some hope still in this fight. Needs siphoning his HP is dwindling. Time is ticking. Fire bro, though, down on Surge. Needs to hit the shot, Vexy, but doesn't. Fire bro's there, I mean, for the Bull and Vexy, for me, I understand they're still swimming. They're still moving forward in day two, but it's like a fish caught in a net. Kind of writhing in place, not really going anywhere. Still inside the water. Susie, Shimoki, always staying side by side, looking to see who they can actually target for fights. Do some damage to Savage. And now Surge is kind of coming in. They might have been a bit too passive. Savage finally going down. It was 400 below, though, and a player can really only offer you 200 damage. So that's to find at least one more. Yeah, look, you know, they did have, like, some Surge issues yesterday, right, for sure, but to be 400 down on Surge, Shio, in game number nine of day two, that is... That's not where you want to be if you're the fifth-place team. That's the least I can say. They have to do something, and fast. they're running out of shields, and... you got to think, even if they are able to outheal this one, uh, you know, going into the later zones, what are they going to do? It's a unique circumstance of this game. We just have a very central zone. A lot of the times we're watching EU on day one and day two in these earlier games, so many people are moving all the time. These guys have to shadow their duos, take pot shots, move to another. When it's a central zone, no one's really moving that much, right? Everyone kind of has that slow type of advantage to be able to play the game. As a result, Swizzy and Shimoki's game style, they find no tags. Yeah, look, they're going to go down to surge here. It's inevitable. Maybe before that, though, they can run into a box and just try, hope, and pray they can hit 
two back-to-back 200 <laughs> shots. Which isn't going to be possible with uh, the striker they've got. So, yeah, this is a very, very unfortunate game for them, right? Because if they do fall, there are so many teams who are still in this game that are hungry and are rising in the standings. The likes of uh, Pink and Nebs obviously in there. Giras, Chari, Pixie and Delft are still in this one. You can't make a single mistake. We saw what a 70-point lead looks like, too. Nothing if you mess up a single game. And that wasn't even a complete disaster. Dennis and Reason kind of made it back. It just didn't really get that top 10, top 5. You have to make it deep into that 8th zone. Tripper and Scram actually having control with Helnada and Refs. Swizzy finally down. And they'll be frozen in time. We now look at some of the big names who... Have already based up in Anvil Square. For Sash and Taysom, not want to let anyone pass without a little bit of cost. I'm liking this already, keeping things very low key as a duo. Waiting for the zone to lock in and going for the next adjustment. One of the most exciting things about this team, right, to watch and pay attention to is just how active Taysom has been as a fragger, right? Mini Minor alluded to it. It's been a trend we've seen in terms of some of the statistics when it comes to damage being dealt. You look at that team and you expect Mustache to be the one, right? To be the, the firepower, that cannon almost. taysen has been in there. He's been carrying that responsibility. And it's been a while since he's had that level of power in a finals lobby like this, as good as he is. So a very, very scary sight for anybody in an endgame. Although the Hammers can play against them too, the one thing that's going for them that I seem to see them utilizing another game now, at least two out of three on day two, is that forecast augment. Perfect positioning. The only duo that pulls that zone. They push forward, invest mats from the edge all the way in before anyone else moves. They have to know exactly where the zone locked in, and they're almost basically central. Looks so good. Thomas and Malabuka get into zone as well now. And so we're seeing, right, the best players in these good positions. Center third, they pull that fourth zone as well. Easy as you do. Queasy and Vino. You can see here, just a quick little refarm, just to keep their mats in check. And they're positioned way up to the north here. They'll be hoping the zone pulls up here, otherwise... If it goes towards that north, they have quite the ways to go. It's water again for EU, and we saw the issues for materials. When it comes to Surge, so many players are just trying to force these shots, break your walls. Reason landing a few good ones here, too. Uncharacteristically, a lot lower than usual. By the time we tune in, three to 400 is kind of where they're at, moving from point A to point B in the game. Once again, the zone just being so central makes less teams just moving openly. A lot of players have to play the game slower. As a result, I think surge across the entire board is going to be a lot lower. Please, Vino also just need to find some damage fast, and already just one wall open for a split second and shot straight to the head. And you can really see just preemptively making sure that path towards the south is possible. Issues for Bevies and Pablo Wingu. Vortex was Axe Force. Well and alive. That will say a lot for Endgame when it comes to high ground control, but looks like it's a desperate fight that these two will go for. Revive of Bevies immediately down. Does get Pablo Wingu into just one more space in terms of boxes. But this is just absolutely a cooked situation. Nothing for Pablo to really do. He's up against players that are absolutely stacked in loot and HP. He'll try to get in, but I guess it'll just be a gift for Gear S and Chari, who's also, I feel like, might be low on Surge. Maybe that lightning strike was just late on Pablo. That was, that, that was the toughest brick wall ever. He pick up <laughs> the wall and just gets a limb. <laughs> Zone pulls towards the east, and so still a lot of the lobby yet to make it there. Thomas, Malabuka, Taysen, Mustache, both two duels will have prime positions on this east side. We'll not really have to build. We'll have so much more to use for the end of the game. And the good thing is, from where they sit, all these players now flying through. You see Taysen and Mustache set up perfectly here just to take shots, get their surge threshold even higher. And you can see they're using a bush now as well in this box, so they're so much harder to hit for anybody who even wants to stop and take a moment to look at them. Janice and Reason also seem to be right beside Thomas and everyone looking surprisingly good on Surge here. Reason and Janice 
the ones who have to kind of hold on to this one now. Taysom Rastash finally moving in, just takes one little hammer to be adjusted. They're kind of in the lead in terms of knowing the information around who's where, around who just faced up, who looks sweet, but Pixie and Della all the way up top, they're the ones to take hype first. And we know they can hold on to it. They know how to play it, they understand how to dominate this layer. Need to be careful though, can't overpeat. Don't have much shields and once again, just jumping up and leaving themselves exposed. These are the little things, the small details that go such a long way. And the potential for a high hold now just becomes even more difficult. But fortunately for them, the best hype team in the lobby isn't looking too strong themselves in that regard. Queasy and Vino having to use all their remaining shields just to have any sort of decent HP. But being this far away from zone, that's almost likely going uphill as well. We'll have to use all three hammer charges to get just into that next circle. Banyak, Karmi, they were the ones who were kind of beaming Pixie all the way on high ground. They go all the way down to the ground now. And elect to rotate themselves. Everyone now just on movement, barely even a single shot fired at the sky. Queasy and Fino, I was going to say they're just trying to rotate in the zone. They just take heights. This is where they want to be. This is where they feel comfortable. Even when things maybe aren't as fruitful when it comes to loot and mats. If they think they have enough to hold it, they will go for it. And there aren't going to be too many contests this game, you'd think, especially with the struggles that Pixie and Della had. Thomas and Malabuka, they've been so consistent here on low ground. I expect to see them continue to just talk their way on through these zones. Seti and Kami, who you associate with being a dominant low team, aren't quite able to piece things together. Mustache and Tayson, they find such a big refresh at this stage in the game. That's going to be huge. I wouldn't be too surprised to see them come away with a win now at this stage as they keep moving through these zones, traveling through all these different layers, all these different elevations. And you're seeing how some teams are struggling with it. If you don't have that hammer, it's so hard. You won't just have to move. You'll have to climb. The ground's moving up now. Once again, we're getting icy cold straight to the glaciers. Big long hills, still on Pixie. Looking mighty dry and super high. Now find themselves all the way down towards low ground, trying to bully a few boxes, trying to see if they can find anything for the moment. But Surge is really ticking down. Just one shot is what Della needs to land. He finally finds it. 18 below, though. It might just net down to zero. 12 above for Della and Pixie to get to breathe. But look at the cost. No mats, no chance. Not a problem to live, but will they thrive? They have to get in a box, you think? They need a refresh, even if they deal with their search, they're 12 above now. Look at their mats, look at their shields. They need something to save their game. Vino, Queasy's down, and he's moved to the front side of the zone, actually not in the back side of the zone, now trying to move towards the front, and he'll reclaim height. But with his free builds, you've got to think at some point this comes to an end. Look at how low the entire lobby is to half this oh, entire zone. It. Is gonna be on top of a cliff. Everyone now going down, Vino barely makes it. A shotgun shot, a big siphon, he's super healthy, but no mats. Hides, he knows there's barely even anyone here. They're all trapped down below, but he will have to leave the high ground at one point. The safe haven is not going to rain true for so long. He tries to get close to the person with a shot that would have been huge, but it's not going to be possible. Pink right in front of him down below. He has to chase it, but the spray is not going to connect. No match just yet, just a few more to use. Two builds, how far can he stretch him? Close, but no cigar. So many opportunities there for him, but he can't quite connect to anything. Reason and Janice, they're still in this game. They're lurking in the backside. The zone pool's so generous to them. They don't have the mats to really claim any sort of layer. So they just sit there and wait. Thomas Albuka also very active. Six Elims, and I saw Taysom getting a few in the feed. So those high and mighty duels who are looking to take away that first place, they might be getting very close to it here. Rustache and Taysom on the other side of Thomas and Malabuka are just absolutely splitting this low ground apart. Wow. Just wow. Claiming space and taking shots to just wipe everybody off these layers. Kami just dropped right into their box. They need that refresh. Cade now on the other side. They just have shots left, though. That refresh has to come in fast. They do pick up Kami. Might just be 150 max. Think up top looking for a few shots. Seti finally going down, so they split apart another duo to share between each other. Thomas not having so many max, but those will also dwindle. Thomas now getting very close to Taysen. Side by side looking to see who can survive. A big collision is coming. Thomas and Malabuka against Mustache and Taysen. You've got to think it's coming, but no, Kate. He's going to interrupt it. He takes down Taysen, but Malabuka and Thomas have their own troubles now. They can't stay alive. They will fall. Mustache is still in this one. He hit one big, big shot there. Takes down Kyrie. He's still in this. A 1v1 now against Ping. There's no way Mustache 
swings this now. Ping, he leaves the farm. He has a couple more mats left. He is able to hold on, but for just how much longer? Mustache has time to heal, and you know he can connect with a big shot. Mustache versus Ping. Everything on this one now. The hammer play to move up. Can't quite connect. Ping can connect. He will take him down. But Mustache to stay alive for that long. Seven limbs in that game. You've got to wonder what that means for them in their pursuit of first place. Ping and Kyrie take the game. But when Stash and Tayson, they might take the standings. That looks so close for all three different teams, right? One team taking max placement. Where Stash and Tayson looking to take max Elon points off of that one. And Thomas Malabuka right behind them. You have to be nervous in this spot as Ping as well. Kyrie finally going down. He stops Thomas, a legend in his own right. And then Stash right after again. Going so close, a game of inches on his aim in terms of landing that shotgun shot. But Ping was there, he held it down, and he wins the game. And look at Kyrie, so happy to see his teammate close things out. Ping did phenomenally, right? Because so many times this season, we've seen when the player goes up with the shot grave hammer at the end, the player on height not quite able to hold on. He kept his cool, kept his nerve, and he wins the game for his team. That's huge for them, right? Where, where any difference in points now is going to be <laughs> massive in terms of as we head into these final games for them in the standings. Yeah, top 20, top 15, definitely shaken up with Ping and Kyrie escalating through the boards. But that top four, that top five, Levin, so much more to be seen. Frankie, what do we got? Well, we've got a duo that absolutely smashed it when the heat was on. I honestly thought that Mustache and Taysom were going to do the back to back then, but kudos to Ping and Kyrie because that was such an exciting end game to Carter. 100%. I mean, it looked like we were going to see a clash of the titans in those final moments when Taysom and Mustache were about to go head to head with Malabuka and Thomas HD, but then from the clouds, Kyrie and Ping came out on top. They went into that engagement, took out both duos, and ultimately secured that victory royale. And this now is going to be a huge confidence booster for this duo. Ping did a really, really good job here as well to close out his win. He actually holds his floor to ensure that Mustache can't hammer on top of him. Mustache couldn't break those builds because Ping was just saying, you know what, I'm holding this floor, I'm holding him down. And that was ultimately what caused him to get that final clutch 1v1. He did such a great job there. Even these guys, they land at Lonely Lab. This is such a long rotation for them. So the fact they had this many materials in order to take high and hold it is impressive. They're does seem to be a recurring theme though in these final fights and that is Thomas, Malibuka, Mustache, and Tayson. Yeah. At the moment, I know Crazy and Vino, they're definitely in the frame, so are Janice and Reason, but these two duos, it feels like it's coming oh, down oh. to the wire between the two of them and you can see it reflected in the standings. Wow, look at the difference in points. First Ooh. place for Murstash and Tayson at 467 and Malabuka and Thomas HD at 464. They've dethroned Janice and Reason that are now in the third place spot. The consistency in the late game from these two duos has been incredible. It really has. They've kind of figured it out. It's all kind of clicked for both of these duos. And this is kind of the top four that we would have typically <laughs> expected, right? Going into day one, a bit of a shock coming out of day one. We're like, hang on a sec. What is this top three? What's this top four? But now it's kind of back to the top three or four teams that we've seen this season. I don't feel like there's a player right now who's hungrier than Thomas mm. to book that spot in the Global Championships. Just look at this performance. Yeah, these guys picked up another good end game together. We talked about it so often yesterday and today. We built up the storyline. These guys can't make end games together. But now when they do, oh. they pop off. This is two incredible players and they're showing every reason as to why. They're picking up so many eliminations. When they're on those mid to low ground layers, they are unstoppable. I mean, you say it yourself, Mini. They annihilate yeah. this lobby. Their opponents, when they're together, they had the early game controlled in the qualifiers, and now it looks like in the second half of Grand Finals, they're starting to control the late game. With the most recent two matches we've seen, I know Thomas HD wants to make Denmark proud and take that number one spot. We just saw it again with a few pre-edits. That made me so happy when I saw that pre-edit coming through from Malibu, because it feels like him again. It feels them dominating those mid to low ground layers with pre-edits, going for eliminations, shots, Unbelievable stuff. Well, I've heard your opinions again and again and again. And you know what? I never get bored of them. But right now, I want to check in with Parajuice to find out who he thinks is going to be taking the acts of champions. Parajuice, are you enjoying the game so far? Yes, definitely. I really like to see those plays. I really do. Yeah, I mean, we're nine games in. So who do you think is going to be taking it today? 
Uh, I, I really wanted to say like may the best win, but as of now, Mercer and Tazen are the best. I, I really have to say that. Um, <laughs> but I really like to see those those plays, you know, like those really creative plays. I really like that. Yeah, we all love to see it. Now, of course, you're used to having so many eyes on you. Of course, your content viewed by thousands. That's a lot of pressure. And of course, these teams are going to a big pressure moment right here. The final three games of the FNCS Grand Finals. How do you think these teams are feeling going into this? Uh, so that's a good question. I think that it's really nervous, but I'm, I'm not a comp player, competitive player myself. But I would like to say, like, believe in yourself, give it like your 100%, uh, because still everything is possible, as you can see, because number one uh, is dropping to number three. So everything is still possible. Anything is possible. And now that we've talked about pressure, I want to know from you, what do you think is the best skill or trait to be a competitive Fortnite player? Oh, I think focus. <laughs> that's something I don't really have because that's why maybe I'm a content creator. Uh, I have such such a lot of respect for these players that play so many games uh, with full focus on. I think I, I can do it. I cannot do it. Uh, well, Paradis, I've been stalking you on the socials. Um, can I ask mm. you about a certain tattoo that you've got on your ankle? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> what does it say? Uh, well, I, I can show it. I can show it, definitely. But well, hello. I, now the grand finals is here. <laughs> it's a <laughs> noob. It's a noob tattoo. <laughs> is that reflecting your in-game play style? Uh, no, no. Um, mm, mm, mm. Um, <laughs> different opinions on that. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? We've seen you on, on YouTube. We know you've got the skills. But if anyone hasn't seen you, where can we find you on the socials? Uh, you can find me on YouTube, Instagram, etc. Uh, on uh, Paradoos. Well, thank you ever so much for joining us. Enjoy the rest of the finals. Thank you very much. It was fabulous having Paradoos on is. the show. I really Absolutely. loved his content. I think uh, you should get a noob tattoo. Yeah. Uh, I mean, oh, why, why did you say that? <laughs> why did you say that? Excuse me, you came to my stream the other day. You saw me in Zero Buzz. I got seven I did, limbs. that's why I mentioned it. And then oh. I got eliminated myself. All right. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to move so swiftly on right now. I can see Level 2K is cracking up. Less of that, please. You've got a grand final to cast as we head swiftly <laughs> into game number 10. We are here in the double digits now. It's game time, Sayo. Just three games remaining for all of these players to complete Major 1. Who will secure a spot to Globals? Tayson, Ristash, Thomas, Malabuka, any of the top four, in my opinion, because now the competition is ever so close. Uh, demanding lead by the, by the Rainers right up before. Janice, Reason, absolutely demolished now. It's anyone's game. Tayson, once again, trying to secure himself and remind everyone why he's the greatest of all time. Thomas trying to show the world that he is the one who has finally needed to get the FNCS and really solidify his place in the history books. And for both their teammates, right, Mustache Malabuka, those guys fought together for so long to try win one. Neither of them could. And now it looks like today one of them will. <laughs> It's just insane to think about how things can change in just three games, even after an entire day of gameplay. And the fact that we have three more means even this team on screen is not done yet. Queasy Vino. We can see some crazy performances that could come right back. But that top three at the top level, I mean, three point difference in three games. This, this is it. This is the finals. This is what Fortnite is all about. For Janice and Reason, though, they'll be trying to remind everyone, look, we're still in this one. We still have a chance, but they need to win this fight here against Pixie and Della. Every other fight kind of with Ego sitting way back, knowing they can win. I think I need to see some initiative from Janice and Reason. Maybe a little bit of regression. Finish out some of these engagements early because they're coming back to haunt you towards the later portions of the game. You're affecting each and every rotation you have, every single strat by about 15 to 30 seconds. That difference is showing now as they start to slow down the longer and longer the day goes. Not as impressive, not as big as a lead it looks like from this team compared to day one. Yeah, they've not been able to find that rhythm. Of course, they've just not been blessed with the zones that they were in day one. Of course, that is a big factor. Boaz and Jaggy here off spawn. Again, the same sort of struggles, not quite able to match Marius. Oh! And Fred off spawn. It will be once again the Danes winning this one. Most impressive right now to me is that dynamic duo up top. Mustache Tayson, Malabuka Thomas. 
It has been fun to see them back to back in just games. Not only today, but yesterday as well. They ended the day in the same game. Rastash and Malabuka facing each other. Started it off today and then continue game after game to kind of be in that spot in the business. This is their story, I feel like. These two duos, you've hit the nail on the head. One of them will win. It feels that way, right? And of course, for Janice and Reason, Queasy and Vino still in this one. A bit behind Giras and Chari as well. Still trying to cool their way on in, but you've got to think it's going to be one of these top two. And again, we've highlighted it so many times, but Tayson used to play with Thomas. They weren't quite able to win the FNCS. Mustache used to play with Malibuka. They had so many attempts at it and weren't quite able to win the FNCS. So both of these teams will be eager to get the one up over the other. Especially Mustache and Malibuka, right? Once you split up <laughs> from your teammate, right? You want to be the one, hey, I want to have this before him. He needed me. <laughs> he was holding me back from winning the FNCS. I know that's what I would be saying if I was one of them two. It's really personal. And for both of these two teams, the way they're playing is so much fun to watch. Both on the same layer, everyone else falling right between them. And they're kind of looking at each other absolutely glaring while hitting perfect shots left to right until they have to face down the barrel again and again and again. As they stare each other down below, up above Queasy Vino, watch and wait for a chance to swoop in. Because when we talk about day two comebacks, of course, Vino has day two in his name. But Queasy, in chapter two, put on one of the greatest day two comebacks we've ever seen. He's no stranger to surprising the world. And if they're going to keep being on height on all these games and keep dominating, there will come a time where they possibly win another game within these next three. Yeah, we keep we just keep highlighting the 2v2 between the top two teams. When you talk about Queasy like you are now, it's 2v10. They're not facing just one team. They're not glaring down one barrel. It's everyone else that wants to get high ground. It's Pixie and Della. It's sometimes Shari and Giras as they try to gear up and go towards height all the way towards the eighth, ninth zone. It's Pablo Wingu over and over again. And Bevy's are rocking too. Axe Force for Texers. All these duels across the weeks and even these two final days having issues that Queezy and Vino have been able to solve easily over and over. Not as fast now in this day two. But we have plenty of more time. It's just game 10. 11 and 12 to come and follow through it after the fact. Bevis, Pablo, the way these guys made it here to the finals is absolute aggression, complete control, instilling fear to everyone they fight and ending fights fast. Unfortunately, what's been happening right now is every fight they do take, they end up taking a bit too much chip damage in trades. And a lot of duels are kind of locked in, playing very defensively, expecting someone to aggress them. They were defying a lot of expectations and diving into boxes unexpectedly in the week two. Glorious first place finish. A landslide almost on their perspective. They had control of the high seas, the high ground as well. It just hasn't been the case today. And you see it. Grows so locked in, he wants to try and find Vortex. He knows he's running around here somewhere. And once he finally does find him, still not able to connect. Have to be able to land those shots. A difference of 30 damage can mean the world, especially towards the later portion of the game. The investment from Firebro and Grolls right now. Huge. No metal available. Half their brick already down. Why? I mean, if you're watching the last two games, you're watching day one. The biggest issue so far has just been Storm Surge for this team. Maybe rename from Firebro to Lightning Bro, because that's all I've seen on his head every time we tune in to the mid game. Fighting for sure and hitting his shots, absolutely. But him and Grolls, I mean, just because of the, the defensiveness, the, the nature, the high skill level of this lobby, it's just not easy or as easy as the weeks to be able to win these fights. Well, that is the difficulty that comes with the FNCS final, right? It's the hardest lobby for Surge there is. It's good for Pink and Nebs, though. The defensive nature for many duos, the fact that they're not actually going out willy-nilly, as you're paying attention to which fights to go for, it gives them room to actually move from the south side to the north side whenever they want to. Let's them dictate when fights start, because every time they get engaged, and I feel like that's where issues start to arise. They're not ready for the fight to really begin. They get to have their eyes active as they move around the field. Della Pixie as well, doing a really good job at just deconstructing duos in their boxes. But that comes at the cost of starting their games comfortably. If they can't find that first fight and finish it well, they don't get to play the game. I see two Elums on them now, so they'll have a voice in this one. This Mustache also still going towards the north side of this zone. 
I don't know how they do it. Every time I watch them, there's like no one else around their path of rotation. Everyone else might be like four or five duels sticking right beside them. They have so much space in between them and everyone else, no matter where the zone goes. Similar situation for Janice and Reason here. Plenty of distance between them and the rest of the lobby. As they move on into zone last game, he had their fair share of struggles with Surge, right? They couldn't quite stay in a comfortable position when it came to dealing damage. They were constantly on the outlook for the whole of the end game. And this time round, they're gonna look to trade. Janice does have some shields that he can pop in the reserve, and so maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to look to go for maybe an ambitious peak. Trip and a scram. Refs and help. Both duels will have been side by side, kind of rotating and on the same positions in the leaderboard today. Their issue is just finding some type of control. There can only be a certain amount of teams consistent every single game, and it looks like they're barely just making the cutoff from time to time for that. When it comes to teams early in mid game, though, Taco has a lot more information as to what's going down. That's right, Shio. And as far as the early game is concerned, this is a perfect start off for Malibuka and Thomas HD because they know the battle between first place is just three point disparity. So finding that early elimination, securing an early four points, and then having the time to just focus on getting the rest of the loot out, rest of the resources, is just going to be an ideal spot for them as they try to push for later on in the game. They've been so consistent. The early and mid game has not been a problem for them, right? They're able to find Surge, able to put themselves in good spots, good positions. There are no struggles there. You see here, Malabuka maxed out on materials as well. Not necessarily the ideal loadout they would have wanted. I'm sure they would both prefer double hammers. I'm not sure if you'd want the heavy shotgun in an inventory. But either way, the setup looks good for them. Very different game for the majority of players, though. We're moving really deep into the southwest. We've had this happen once, I believe, on day one. The zones really do dictate who gets to have that initial control. Can really switch up how that leaderboard looks, who gets to allocate all the points. But one thing that is consistent, those top four teams already moving early, finding their spots. They will not be strangers to this game. Hoop and Cade also, uncharacteristically, it's the second zone weapon, and they're out of Anvil Square. Rare. <laughs> Rare things are happening in the last games of the FNCS final. But they don't have the limb, so I assume Mr. Savage and ZX are still alive as well. Frey and Clown. Gonna use that reach to just rotate past. They can't be seen. Eventually, they are gonna have to pop out on the other side. And Coop knows that, so you'll just wait patiently for them to emerge. And when they do, they use the bush for cover. Their Savage and ZX also moved slightly slower down ways towards the map. Just have that point update go across on screen. This is a very important game for Janus Reason and Queasy and Vino. If they don't do well here, I feel like they might just be lost to the fishes when it comes to keeping up with points. With our top two Titans, we're just going back and forth and have absolute momentum right now in day two of the grand finals in Europe. They're just have a, they're a little bit of just a one point differential. It's more than 30 after that, it looks like. For the players down below, or at least by the end of this game, you cannot go down. You need to have a very nice showing here. Stay consistent. Chari Gira is also kind of on that line right after it looks like Queasy and Vino. I know it's the team that just rocks in. First FNCS, I believe, in total for Giras. Looks so good on day one and at least hold on to a top five slot. Really good positioning on the boards in day two. Yeah, it's been slow but steady, right? They've not quite been able to keep up with the pace, but I don't think many people would have expected them to, right? When you're dealing with the greatest Fortnite players of all time who have experienced double-digit amounts of FNCS finals, 
It's always going to be hard, especially when things are changing in terms of their off-spawn situations from day to day. We're doing a better job, it looks like, of just analyzing where the zone is going and moving forward than the counterparts on the north side as well, Janus and Reason. This will be the ultimate test for them. You mentioned it too, Levin. When it comes to south zones, they do not play as well when they're not gifted that north side. Th this is like the final exam, it looks like, for Janus and Reason. Yeah, it's the final test, right? And you said it. If this game isn't quite good enough, the likes of Taste and Mustache, Malibuka and Thomas are just going to start to build a lead that will just feel so insurmountable. Queasy and Vino deep in the zone against a team that is desperate for surge. Zachary and Ark haven't done any damage this game. 404 below. They will be hungry to win this fight. But Queasy and Vino have to know that and they have to be patient. And yeah, nicely done. Okay. Wick work. <laughs> Easy work. Not even a doubt in their minds about how that fight was going to end. And some heals and some shields that will be used to be able to get them back up. Fight was just far enough to where no one's actually hearing it inside the circle. They have their own problems, their own duels to deal with. Reason and Janice almost have their way in. But that was like a team with nothing to lose versus a team with everything to lose there in that fight. I'm really glad it ended super fast. Oh my god. These guys are getting truly tested. Reason and Janice have to move down all the way again. Almost a full max rotate. And so will Queasy and Vino, right? And they're obviously way behind now after sitting in the zone there for that fight. So for our third and fourth teams, a very, very difficult game. But Malabuka, Thomas, Taysom, and Mustache. This is the perfect situation for those teams to start to separate themselves and make it a two-horse race. Della Pixie used to having a little bit of breathing room to assess where the best spot is in the zone to go for height. They're also lagging behind. They're not going to have that chance to stay up. Nabs in pink, though. They were born here, raised in these lands. They're looking so fine inside the zone. Yeah, they're home, right at home. And they're way above on surge, which hasn't always been something that we've seen from them in these situations where they have home zones, right? What? 300 above. Two airdrops for free? Hey. Someone's watching. It's me. I'm I saw you leave it. the room. I saw Look. you leave the room and come back. These are my boys, you know? I gotta, <laughs> I gotta help them any way I can. Two airdrops. Let's see what they gift to them. But either way, this game is setting up to be really nice for them. Probably one of their best setups they've had across these first two days. If they don't turn this into at least the top three, this might be a crazy blunder, but you don't know where these later zones go. They have control for now, but it could easily just elasticize and swip com completely to the other side. And then these guys are playing from behind. Shimoki and Swizzy, it is not business as usual. These guys usually do not go down near these points, and it's just apples that Swizzy can eat. Electing to pop the minis first. These guys have to get moving. Another big cliff in the way. And they can't afford to take any damage here whatsoever. Going above it, did Swizzy make the jump? Has he passed the moat? Is he in the castle? Is the question. Yes, right beside Shimoki. They got one more charge to use. A few teams not picking up on the fact that these guys are lagging behind. And finally, a downward slope. They're almost in. Swizzy will fall, but possibly right next to the boxes where Shimoki can't pick him up. They cannot afford to dwindle any longer. And Shimoki cannot afford to lose his teammate. He has to go for the revive. They only really do well when they're with each other, but a rogue player in zone will take him out. It's Reason who's playing catch up from the north. And they use so much to get here. This might be a perfect refresh from them, but Shimoki will not give it up for free. He's still going to stay alive in this game. He still wants to try to find something out of it, but they've already been slipping down the leaderboards. Giras actually goes down. That's Shimoki's direct competition in the standings right now. And so maybe that will just be enough of a energy boost to encourage them to stay alive. If those two go down, the longer he stays alive, the more likely they are to reclaim their spot in the top five. But with no materials, no HP, certainly going to be a tough task. Perfect for the duo down below that loves to stay hidden. It's Squeezy and Vino up top that are moving through. Taysen should have a free rotation almost, as these guys will make a lot of noise into the next zone. 
they'll actually end up moving first. Scram and Trooper have to go to the hammers and start to strike the earth. The brief follows. Scram almost sliding in. Has to just make it past a little bit of a town to get into that safe circle. So many duels electing to go this way, though. They're not cutting completely in on that white line, even if they have hammers. Looking to use the lack of sight lines towards the north to just wrap around the bottom, and a few are having successes. Scram and Tripper choose to just hide and hammer right afterwards. They're delayed, but then they also find a path in that exact way. Perceive actually moved first from that sight line. Takes a lot of damage. Scram needs to find it too. Now just 100 below. They have to force something here. Scram and Trippin desperately need to put themselves in a better spot to find it. them. Hodas I was right down the door. That could have actually been the opportunity they needed, but they didn't want to wait for it. They wanted to get to zone quickly. Don't want to be a team to get caught outside. Queasy and Vino down below a wow. But Queasy coming in clutch with the damage. That's typically what you expect Vino to be the one doing, but Queasy doing it all himself right now. I like that too. They were kind of using the loudness, the shine of high ground, and the fact that they were overpeaked. So they just aim right below them. Anyone who tried to shoot those guys got shot. So working in tandem with Mixit all the way in the sky. Shaman Tripper almost in a perfect spot now to just keep playing this game, but it's not all just position, it's also damage. They've got none. Need to have just a little bit more here. Can they out heal the storm? They probably can for this surge threshold, right? Not many people need to go down. But moving forward, right, that's the concern. They don't even want to wait. They want to go right in, but unfortunately, that's not really going to work out for them. Scram making the players a solo there. Trippin wasn't really in a position to support or help in any way. And that's going to derail their game. Trippin has a clutch situation he has to handle. Doesn't have a hammer. Even as a solo this season with a hammer in your hand, you can make things happen. Trippin doesn't quite have that luxury, but he does have some materials to play around with. Kami and Vanyak. They're still alive together in this game, but for how much longer? That's always the issue with that team. Both being able to stay up together. Versace and Tayson also low on that damage threshold. Kind of laying a trap here almost. If they just knew on the other side that Resnata was there. They can still have a chance to land the shot. Almost trying to box him. Does he get it? No. He goes to the top. He's actually in the cone. Versace sees it. Drops him down. On the other side, Tayson's awaiting exactly where Rex could be, but it is Mustache that finds him. It's just a little bit of damage, though. Could be enough. Zone finally locked in. They wait out the surge. They know they're low on it, though. They need to find a lot more if they want to go towards the top five for this game. Yeah, that did cost them quite a bit in terms of their HP, but they are looking back to being healthy again. We saw how much impact a refresh at that stage in the game was for them last time round. It led to them getting second place. Is Reason still alive? Yes. All the way in a box by himself. Janice just went down. I think these guys tried to get in. Look for an opportunity to maybe just get a few more materials because Reason has nothing. One build left. He's got one box. He has to pray a hammer. Player comes right next to him. Someone falls for the trap. Queasy and Vino not near height either. When can they take it? Vino's actually just not here. It's only Queasy. He's a solo. With not many materials, but a hammer still in hand. He's going to use to just sort of run his way on in. Before hammering now. He probably wants to land in this box and try to take Kami wow. out. Oh wow. my goodness. Queasy. There goes that man. He stays alive as well. He won't be taken out. Vanyak can't get the trade. It's just stage one, though. Has to go for it again. Needs to make miracles a possibility. Gets damage down. Queasy. Going to be found to be almost lost in Storm. We go all the way back to Reason. Yes, it was dark that it ends up taking him out. That's one team that's not going to be able to hold on to that top four reason. Barely keeping his head above water. Needs to keep breathing. He's got no mats either. And when they figure out he's right above Nipsey and CZB, might just have something to say about it. It doesn't seem like they know, so he will survive for just a couple more seconds before he can hammer his way on out. But just like Weezy, he's probably hoping he can hammer himself in a box. It's actually Malabuka. Their direct competition now, taking them out. And that's a huge find for Malabuka, especially because Tayson, he doesn't have a mustache in this one. 
He has to play as a solo. Tell Stranger to it though, he's done it many times before. The power that Thomas and Malabuka will have together will be huge. Still up top with Pixie. They'll start to shoot down on the rest of the lobby. And it's a flavor we haven't really seen before. So many people adjusted off spawn weeks, makes completely new players up in the business. Lots of new variables. Thomas Malabuka now, still on that low, way ahead of everyone else. Three eliminations already. They should hold that first place. How far can they stretch the lead? Here at the front side of zone, they need to start claiming space because if not, they'll get cut off. It's Pink and Nebs right there in front of them. It's another team above them. It's Ryan and Paco, and now they get taken out from behind. Malabuka all alone, Thomas has fallen. And he doesn't really have much to hold on really in this game. Has the hammer, has the tools. What can he forge? And the zone pool as well in his favor. Malabuka versus Taysen. Both side by side. He's running low on mats. Both have hammers. Taysen has the first move to get forward. Malabuka, what's he cooking? Vixen already going down. Lost almost a storm, only two builds. Can't Nebs make a box. He cannot build at all. Nebs and Pink are his targets. Nothing to mantle to. Straight deep into the storm. Flopper, and that's the last move he can make. Misses against Pixie. Twice the blunders, not like this. Malabuka goes down. It's Taysen that takes him out. Taking the lead almost. Just one healing with him. It could be anyone's game. Now it's Dila, who's also absolutely eradicated. Chaos on the server as everything goes aflame. Friendly Fields is the location. But the entire board changes, but the game's not over yet. And in all that chaos, there's nobody even sitting above. Pixie Nella got taken on, everybody forgot about it. It's tripping now, flying through the skies. He lands, but he needs to start to connect to something because his mats are starting to dwindle. And there are players there, but everybody in absolute shambles. Nobody really finding any bit of control. And this might be the right chance for him to just sort of walk through, sneak up behind, a big 100 shot. Needs a bit more. Fred though, really on the defensive now, waiting. For him and Marius to find something. All right, Marius have the control. Marius pushed all the way back in the storm. Comes right back on a higher layer and follows through the bushes. What can he see? Trapped in a tree. Marius climbs all the way towards the top, but can't find anything. He's lost. He can't see much. Kali by himself takes out Trippern. And just like that, in a flash, the game is over. Complete chaos in this one in EU. All around the board, players just knocking each other out of the way. Nobody even having a clue what was going on there for a moment because every single player, desperate, up, down, dropping to low with no match, trying to connect with some sort of a shotgun shot. Marius and Fred at the end though, but one of the few duos remaining that was able to try and control something. You see them here dancing around the different pieces, dancing around the edits and connecting with big shots onto Blatcher as well. And you see here in the end, when Kylie thought he had done everything to win it all out, it was Marius and Fred still alive, still waiting to clean him up and winning the game there as well. Absolutely huge for Marius. That adjustment at the end with the hammer as well. Gets thrown back in, gets to an elevated lair, finds the heat through the bushes where you can't even see. Just his senses level. Everything but sight, the instinct, the state of mind to win that game. Look, I was talking about Fred and Marius yesterday and I was saying how much I loved the way Marius and Fred were playing, but Fred in particular was the one shining. I wanted to see more for Marius. That was a lot more, right? <laughs> Helping his team to win the game, a big, big victory for the Danes. This is a team that has one of the longest off-spawn fights we've ever seen that still makes a lot of the time. They win most of it too, right? It takes a while, but that's what's called resilience. Two days of games and then winning that one out. Big, big game for that duo. How will that impact the standings? We have Frankie to find out. Yeah, I cannot wait to see the standings after that one because it was the most chaotic game we've seen so far this weekend. So many of the big names finding themselves in solo situations with no materials. Even Janice and Reason were just finding themselves out on a limb, unable to refresh. So many of our top teams were left as a solo there, but of course it was Marius and Fred that managed to come out on Sol. A really, really great performance as Levin alluded to there. Fred just performing so well yesterday. Marius, one of the best up and coming players in Denmark, showing why in this game as well. It's great to see them popping off because they have so much potential to. Look, we talk a lot about when we're talking about Danish players, Thomas HD is the name that's brought up, but seeing the performance from Marius and Fred here, I mean, I'm loving what they've been capable of doing, but you can really see what stakes are on the line in these matches. When Taysen, Merstash, Thomas Malabuka, Queasy Vino, Janice Reason, they're all fighting for their lives, trying to get every last placement point or elimination you can, you know we're getting to those last moments.
It's interesting that how close the skill gap is in terms of me mechanical skill and aim and ability between all of the duos in the top 50. And it's moments like those when we really get to see the potential from everyone in the lobby. I was really excited to see Vico making an appearance as well. Been quite a quiet weekend for him so far. But I remember week one and two, this is a multi-eliminator. Unfortunately, I guess the zones haven't been in his favor until this moment. Yeah, not quite. They're landing at the south side of Slappy Shores, of course. We know how many west zones there have been, but Queez, but, sorry, Queezy, but uh, Vico <laughs> is one of the fa most fantastic players. I love Vico as well as a person. He's such a funny guy to be around. Uh, I met him at Invitational at DreamHack and stuff. He's such a great guy, um, and I'm happy for them. They're having a better day too. Day number one, I didn't think they had any points after about four games, so it wasn't looking great for them. But Thomas HD, another one of our top teams that is performing well. Even our top four teams, not actually moving in terms of the leaderboard standings because they all went down at the same time. They all went down at the same time, but that just makes it that much more intense. It's yeah. kind of what you love to see with five points being the difference between first and second place and closely behind, we have Queasy Vino and Janice and Reason. But looking at a bit of the highlights from Thomas HD and Malibuka, you can see that they know what is coming soon. That pride, that first place trophy that they want. Unfortunately, though, Malibuka was unable to connect those last two shots that he needed to get that refresh. But hopefully, he doesn't take that into the upcoming matches. And that's the problem with the heavy shotgun, of course. When you do not ADS with it, it does rely on Bloom. So it's very, very difficult to hit those shots consistently. We saw that there at the end. Of course, Malibuka not connecting at those crucial moments. And unfortunately, that's what caused him to go down. But they'll be happy, sitting pretty in second place, only five points behind. I was about to say, those points are looking incredibly yeah. close. And, you know, we've got Queasy and we've got Venno. They were in eighth at the end of day one. They're slowly creeping up on the leaderboard, but they need to have a couple of pop-off games because there's only two remaining. But this is the duo that can get it done. Yeah, it is. And of course, we saw Venno change his name to Venno Day 2. Queasy's actually changed <laughs> his name today as well. And this is the same name that Queasy had when he won FNCS in Chapter 3 Season 1 with Hen. So what a fantastic uh, pr pr promise for this duo. I mean, they're not too far behind. There's still two games to go. It's all to play for. Yes, to at the top. Oh, yeah. Stash and taste. And oh, yeah. I'm guessing you just That's exactly are what something I was a bit to talk about these guys took out You know I wanted to talk about it. Taysen and Murstash. I mean, Taysen had a rough chapter three, but now with this change in playstyle that they've brought into the grand finals, playing more consistent, constantly making it to the end game. This is kind of where I want to see Taysen reassert himself of being the GOAT. The GOAT. He deserves to have it as well because, like, realistically, this season, they haven't been able to sort of find their play style. They haven't been able to find their feet, especially with such a huge shift in the meta. It's been tough for them. They haven't quite really found an identity in the first sort of three or four weeks. Now they're actually finding that. They're able to play those mid-ground layers well. Tayson clutching up as a solo in so many instances today. It's great to see. And honestly, they do deserve to be in the top spot. 45 eliminations too, by the way, which Ooh. just trumps any other team. <laughs> it's also fun to see Pixie and Della going up the leaderboard in a couple of places because Crazy, you know, having a not the best game they've had so far. Mm. We got to see the two of them creeping along that high ground as well. They are the princes of high ground. They're trying to create a new legacy, I guess, up top because they are the new kids on the block when it comes to FNCS Grand Finals. But we haven't seen them convert that into a victory royale yet. Not quite yet, but they're trying and you got to commend them for that <laughs> because they are really trying for that high ground because high ground wins games. Even in this meta where things are a little bit more different, it really does. I mean, the shockwave hammers have shucking things up a lot in the mid ground, but it still rules true, right? High ground, high ground wins games. And with only two more games to be played out, it's really important who's going to be able to take it. Well, thinking about the top five right now, who would you say it's going to be? I don't know why it's in the back of my head, but I'm I'm hearing a I'm hearing a Thomas HD in there. I don't know what's what's Working. going on, but I'm I'm feeling it. I trust the experience of Taysen. Taysen's been in these situations before. You talk about nerves, you talk about anyone that's sitting there a little bit shaky right now. His hands will be stiff. He'll be <laughs> so smooth with this. It's going to be amazing. I wonder if a victory royale is on the cards for Thomas and the Malabuka because we've got two more games for them to get it done. So will they do it in game number 11? Thomas and Taysen landing together game after game, right in front of an entire truck that has chunk splashes available, a full 100 shield. Malabuka and Mustache right above them seeing what they can do with a lot of action. Fast forward to year 11, and now we have them on other teams side by side competing on the same layer game after game, five points apart from each other 
right at that champion spot. One of the more exciting things about that storyline as well is that no matter which team wins, one of them will be crowned FNC's champion for the first time, right? Of course, Tayson, he's a serial winner. He's done it all before. He just wants to add another one to the tally. But for his teammate and for the other team, Malibu and Thomas, they desperately trying to win that first chip. Who will it be to take it? We have two more games left for you. Plenty to follow all across the map as well, not just between the top two teams, but everywhere down beneath that as well. So many of these stories we've been following all season long, all wrapping up, coming to a close. Absolutely, the day one absolute blowouts that came through and showed us, wow, you cannot doubt any duo that enters this game. Giras, Cherry, sitting currently in seventh place so far. Sixth, seventh place, looking so good on their debut, maintaining that on day two. Side by side with Swizzy and Shimoki. Both coming in from very different situations, very different spots. Here we go. I feel like this is deja vu here, right? The winners <laughs> of that last game. Fred and Marius. They've won here off spawn so many times. They start with the one man advantage. Saying Kami taken out in the feed by Nipsey. Season B. Not ideal at all for the invitational winners. I'm seeing really fast full finishes as well across duos. This might be that game five, second last game of Fact 11. Things get spooky. You're right. Things do get spooky in the penultimate game of these FNCS days. Fred and Marius, this is spooky, right? Them not actually closing things out onto Jaggy. Jaggy being able to escape, he doesn't escape. That's not supposed to happen. <laughs> and game one, they prolonged their demise, but eventually ended up going down as a duo. Haven't seen Jaggy rock it as a solo so far. Hold on a minute. Okay, I was really worried here, right? Because Fools and Gudan obviously in this area. <laughs> the likes of Janice and Reason, Pixar and Della. Pixie and Della, sorry, on the lurk. And so seeing them have two eliminations made me think, hold on a minute, they've taken somebody out. But no, it was two elims onto the Frenchies. You can see these guys are still up and alive. Reason Janice here looking towards Breakwater Bay where Pixie and Della are still trying to loot up. Trading a bit of surge here. Not a favorable trade for Janice at all. Doesn't do any damage. That was the chug keg versus minis. Janice not gonna be able to pull on an all in from the spot. Five-point differential between the first two teams. Mustache and Taysen all the way up top. Northside Slappy Shores never really had a problem. This time, they're going to be able to have that zone, too, and keep it moving. Issue we've seen so far is people do get zoned sometimes. Surge is a problem. Taysen in that last game, barely just above, was able to really push that game forward. But they have to make sure they're landing these shots in early and mid, keeping ahead on Surge. Thomas Malabuka, it might just be that southwestern zone. It's just so hard for teams of any place to really keep up. Zara Zangi, you're talking about some of the teams we were just introduced to this FNCS. Their flavors, those stories. Still matter in that second last game. They can't change their fate. Zara's still in this fight. Look at the takedown clone. Nice wraparound. Couldn't quite find the back wall, so couldn't completely box him in. But Zara doing a good job of ducking around these fields, ducking and diving. It was a buy time for Zangi to be able to get all his HP back up, but as Jarko gets in, well, Zara's actually doing the most. He takes one out. Up to clone now, but all that time he bought for Zangi is going to be enough for him to be able to have a little bit of say in the fight. Comment out of nowhere, though, comes in with the sip toast, it's over. It's Dark Desi, man. <laughs> dark Desi. Don't mess around. He's going to soup in in the darkness. What is this for? Thomas and Gmail looking at a single time we've seen so far in these two days, Levin. That someone's near them. Pop the trap down. If they go down here, that could be the FNCS done. That could be their chances of a championship in this major. Completely spoiled. Flixy and cheating could just completely upset everybody. in not just Denmark, but... And all around the world, watching these two rooting for them. They have the pitch set up, but Thomas and Malibuka, they are holding on, not completely flustered, but they will be surprised at the prospect of fighting here. And this started because it was a trap set by Flixie all the way on that igloo. We've seen how careful these guys have been when they go in for those chests. Last loot there, but at a cost. 
Now, though, damage has been done. Looks like Flixies ran through a few more mats. They have to build around the defensive structure that Thomas and Rebuka have down below. Still have such a deep resource pool of what they can use. The slower the fight gets, the more likely you'd think one team disengages. The sinister side of me wants to see them fight, though. Wants to see <laughs> this chaos drama. Because I would back Thomas and Malabuka to win, but you never know in these fights. Flixie and cheating, very talented players for sure. I mean, the longer they delay, the more rotations get in the way as well. And they leave. They leave. They hammer out. They disengage. And so Malabuka and Thomas can breathe. There is still life in this game for them. The game plan is definitely different, though. It's not going to be the same in terms of tempo at all. Have to recuperate. Have to find a way to get all those mats back as well. We'll tune into Falcon for a little bit, too. Some of the teams towards the bottom side of the board looking to see how much they can affect their destinies. Push up in the standings, get a little bit more money. Hayson right next to Vico. They both understand something's going on here. Hayson doesn't have to move too much. He's finally found Vico. He's just here for one of these hollow chests. He doesn't want anything to do with Vico because of the stakes that are on the line. He's not going to all in for it at all because of how far split he is as well. From his teammate, from Slappy. He's going to move way back, but he's also not going to miss. It might look like Tayson's running, but he's not running. Yeah, doesn't want anything to do with it, but I'll, you know, hit a quick 90 shot. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. That's better than whatever the heck is in that chest. Yes, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Zaka and Ark. Unfortunately, these guys, no matter where they've landed on the map, they've been all over the place. It's almost like they're playing drop spot roulette here, just picking different points on the map to land, but nowhere <laughs> quite so successful for them. Well, how bad can this spot be? Let's just choose this random spot next to a cliff. What could happen? Queasy with a pistol. <laughs> Four Queasy layers above. Yeah. Abrixi and Della looking really good on this rotation. Very good timing, trying to hook all the way down and then get in. Don't want to lose too much time, though. They're going to start to have a little bit of a jam at this intersection of three different duos. On the lowest point of elevation, they have to just be very silent all the way up to Forzen. Della Seen, though, all the way up with a hammer. Pixie just has to build, and it's going to be a nice little split. Della goes up again to try to knock him down, but Forzen's connected. Still looking for more. He's getting reckless with it. Almost in the box. Can't really follow through with the shot. Della picks it on the same side. They've kind of lost that power, firepower from the split. And Andalex. It's amazing we're moving. Della hasn't oh. seen them, though. They were on his screen, but he hasn't seen them. And now half those chug splashes will go to waste as that zone comes in. That is rough. Oh, and Pixie taking a big chunk of damage as well. This is not ideal at all for the boys. They... Don't need this. Not oh. one bit, and not at this stage in the competition either. Big for the top four. The hold up, JJ doing a glove sheet in the mix. To the guys who look like they have 400 HP each. Wrap it up. <laughs> this is disaster. No team is living here. Della, you do not want to fight these guys. They'll make the fight feel like it lasts six years while you take triple the damage. Love she off these walls. Sandwich chomped at. Absolutely eradicated. Oh my god. Looks in the face of demise of absolute elimination and says, I don't care. Shoot again. <laughs> it's over. Two duels. 40 seconds. Wow. It doesn't get much better than that for Glubshi and JJ2. They've not quite had the FNCS grand final weekend they would have wanted, but not too bad. So far for them, in that time though, there has been some things we've missed, so we're gonna throw it to Tackle to fill us in. Of course, Levin, and we already saw Tayson and Mustache secure that Elim onto Vico, but what happened prior to them trying to even hunt him down in the first place was actually this, just Tayson looking for surge tags, pretty standard and expected gameplay, but at the same time, it's the fact that Mustache being on the low ground, attacking from a different angle, just really seemed to catch Kylie off guard. As soon as they got that knock, they knew they were good to move in. So this team, Eliminations, they're trying to secure those points and trying to maintain first place in the leaderboards.
Thank you so much, Taco. It'll be so much easier for them to be able to maintain that lead. The biggest issue they had in that last game, which made things a little bit flimsy for the team, is that surge was really bad. They were right on the line. They did not have a little bit of a soft padding or comfortability with it. All those shots on Avico and company, all those early game engagements where Taysom just looks like he's on one. It's nuts right now for the team entirely. Really good insight to see how that fight really broke down. Taysom with a few eliminations as well. Gonna up that five point lead to a nine point lead as we enter the later portions of the game. Santa Lucci, oh, no. line it up. Janis, oh no, caught asleep. Had no clue that anyone was behind him. And that leaves reason all alone. Anytime I see a replay now at this stage in the game, I'm always <laughs> going to be scared because you know it's going to be something drastic in the way these games are going to go. And we saw... Wow. <laughs> wow. Reason. For seasons, reason in that position gives us suspense. He prolongs that solo play. Nanoseconds, it's over. And game by game, it just looks like that FNCS pickaxe is just slipping out of the hands of Janis. He will not be able to hold on. Man, six games of control they had, a run between day one and day two. And now in the penultimate game, the second last one, the last chance to have a say to be in that top two because they're just so much higher. They're silenced, muted, suppressed where they are. And that's two big teams falling out of the top five, third and fifth place, both down. That's great news for Queasy and Venno, who will be hoping to get back into a better position into the top three where they're accustomed to being more times this season than not. And for Taysom, Mustache, Malibuka, Thomas, it truly has now become the two-horse race everybody anticipated. Which one of these teams now will solidify themselves as champions at the end of these next two games? Shimoki, Swizzy. They sort of slipped off the standings a bit, but climbing their way back up. But they do have Cade and Coop in their way, who have been a formidable opponent to anybody in this lobby when called upon. You can see K just sneaking by here. A bit of teamwork as Coop just runs his way on in, wraps his way in with the bow. And I don't think they were ready for it. Shimoki now on the back wall. And pressure's being applied. His Swizzy's already fallen. Shimoki now in a 1v2. I don't think he even knows what's really just happened in front of him. K owns the ramp, but on the other side, Shimoki owns all the walls. They've done the damage they needed to do. Shimoki needs Fuzzy alive to have that good game, and that's not going to be the case anymore. No more reboots available either. There's no chance this duel goes the distance anymore, but Shimoki can't get revenge inside this fight. Big shot on the Coop. He's still holding on, and these guys haven't done enough damage to stay above Surge. Coop down. 1v1 for Shimoki. Every shot matters, and he makes it count. They stop absolute destruction in terms of their chances at staying on the boards. But how long did Shimoki last? That is the question we will be following all throughout this game. Can Shimoki outlast? Whoa, 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 Thomas hold up, and Malibuka. What is going on? Well, you this... know what's going on. It's all back to the start of the game. The fight that just slowed down all their progress. And now they're here struggling, barely in the zone, barely above Surge. And not looking like a team that's going to hold on to first place. Look at this, sending Thomas all the way through, and he slides right in! What a play! While he's getting hit by Surge, and he turns around 180, and continues the fight they win it, almost back in the game. The most, the, the best part about this, forget the inventory, right? He has the hammer. The mats are looking really good. A lot better than 30 seconds before. Let's oh, go! Brilliant. Thomas Alibuka instantly, they chase it! Right click, left click, combination. A bounce to a slam. They know one player's weak to have to act fast. Chuck Splash is now being thrown. The advantage leaving. If they have zone is the question. I'm not sure if they do in this position. It's Vortex and Belusi, a team that does not go down easy. Thomas and Malibu, they refuse to lose. They refuse to be out of this race. Battling, hustling, fighting. And well, just holding. They have the position now ahead of these guys. 
to hold them in. Vortex and Velusi will be very aggressive in trying to make them pay for it. But both those teams just running away now. What a dynamic display of skill. Maintaining distance from the zone. Landing pressurized shots, going for almost a 1v2 all in. But straight up just switching the gameplay. Defensive boxing, going straight into another whoa, fight. Whoa, ignoring whoa. and moving. Lucy versus Queasy and Vino to stay inside that top four. To really climb all the way back up to the top two. Queasy and Vino need this game and they're gifted another two piece. The issue so far from zone and it's getting further away. And we know this game has to be a good one for them. Janice and Reason are down. That's the third place team. These guys were in fourth. They need a big game to overtake them. And even with all our top team struggling, look who's looking nice and comfortable. <laughs> sitting pretty, another slappy zone. This is the exact type oh! circumstances that led to them winning a game. And we're here again. A bigger limb. Mustache and Tayson are ready. I still see a little bit of trouble when it just comes to Surge. 122 above. It's just not enough for them to be able to do whatever they want to do. They have to stay on the story of just trying to find damage. They can't work for the high ground position, and unfortunately, Mustache can't land the shots. Onto Grills or Fire Bro. They're isolated, lots of trees in the way. They have specific duels they can target, but now they know they're there. Vortex Belusi make it all the way in. This is where we last saw Thomas and Malabuka. They're fine on the left side, but we also know they're low on search. And for Vortex and Belusi, they pick up Swizzy, the solo. Unfortunately for them, that's going to be the end. But for Vortex and Belusi, they have not a far distance to be able to get to zone. One shockwave hammer away from just being on the edge. They can find their way all the way into the top 15. This could be a big game for them to climb high in the rankings and get some more money. Scram Tripper, same thing. Second last game with so many big names out in front of you. This is some of the most we've seen of the top 15, top five, just not in the game. A lot of players can make complete changes in the standings, not just at the top, but mostly in the middle. Buffs and JJ2 being stopped by the pressure. Chari Gires still just calm <laughs> by themselves, composed. And so far ahead in Surge, that is really impressive. Far ahead, but not comfortable by any means. They still need to do a bit of damage, and so they'll be opportunist in their approach. Vino in the back of his tarp, very, very close by <laughs> Marius. 167 to 90 above. Yeah, it's uh, not ideal at all where they sit with Storm Surge. And not ideal at all for Thomas and Malabuka this game, but they've made things work. They find the body, they pick up another limb. That's going to be Vortex that gets taken out. We saw them fighting Vortex and Belusi earlier, right? So a bit of revenge now coming through. Another team rolling up. They're not together. They need to be careful, that's the Chawa. Combat causing them some issues. Bodies and boxes. Wow. People keep fighting. Stories possibly ending. Pages of books torn apart. Never making it to the end. 286 above those. This is exactly what Thomas and Malabuka need. They get to read on to another chapter. In the distance, you can see Tayson, who has that one point advantage up inside the lead. So close to zone, though. Thomas and Malabuka have the time. A refresher would be huge, too. Able to gain all those mats, really play the game out. Vino and Puisi, another airdrop. Mach about to possibly use, but they'll have to give something up. Vino, Alexa just pop that slurp. Thomas and Malabuka have to be very careful. Every duo around them, I think, is at least almost 50 damage down on Surge, they're ready to pounce. It is so close between those top two teams that they can't afford to slip up. The Elims alone have pushed them back into first place, right? But if they were to go down at some point, it'd be not too long before Mustache and Tayson usurp them again. Kyrie and Ping having some struggles that Vino and Queasy will take advantage of. They push their way in and they roll them over, but it's not done yet. It's Firebro coming in. That leaves Vino with one situation alone to get out of that box. He's not with Queasy either. They need to regroup. Most important game for Vino and Queasy. 90 points behind. 
if they want to win this FNCS, this has to be the game. Need a stellar performance, and they'll go right above their opponents. Thomas Malabuka straight towards the top. They're going to take it. Fino doesn't care. And he's up in the sky just like that. It's them chili chugs. That extra bit of speed allows him to just run up the side. Almost unnoticed. Rifting flow that's couldn't react in time. It's not going to be enough to win the game. It's not going to be enough to have height. They need to have as many eliminations as possible. This has to be in the double digits from that team up top to try to be able to catch up to Mustache Tayson and Thomas Malbuka all the way down below. A few teams are already falling. Nev's also trying to elevate from that top five even farther. Well, that top 10 into the top five. Excuse me, Thomas HD and Malibuka, though. Just have to make the right decisions. Just have to play it safe for a few zones. And the Shockwave Hammer will allow them to get towards zone. One bounce, two bouncing in. A better position, <laughs> up elevated. And now looking at everybody else, you know, queasy. Gliding their way through the skies, picking out where exactly they'll start their hype base from. And now that they found it, a couple of 90s will only be the difference between getting up. Vino, though, so aggressive, so hungry. They're not even going for high right now. They're going for this. And, yeah, they'll find it on Tamarius. That is huge. The mats are going to do wonders for them as they move on throughout this end game. Taste of the mustache needs something like that themselves as they start to plan their next move. Hammer in and straight down low. 350 search to work with. They have so much breathing room. Just need to let the game end itself almost. Thomas HD also in similar positions, but he's landing big shots like he needs it. A pixel shown and he claims it. Thomas to gear us, gear us down. And both of them still safe and sound. Oh Blocked off on the front box. They choose to just use the hammers and get straight out. It was Mustache and Taser right in front of them, but they hammered out of the way. The top two teams clashing here in this end game. Once again, but up above, Queezy and Vino in their own battle for height. They're trying to take it, but it's Trexer and Asa that are giving them problems. Trexer completely deleted as Asa takes down Queezy. All up to Vino now, and he needs a lot of eliminations to keep this up towards the top two. You can see Tayson and the Mustache down below claiming space. Thomas and Malabuka in the backside. They need to try and find something as well as they move on forward. That hammer's going to get them there. And once again, they might walk right into the path of Mustache and Tayson. Big shots connecting, big shots flying, but Tayson needs a refresh. Mustache has gone down. Another game where Tayson has to clutch up. They'll wait for the next shots. Silence all around him. Wood builds can be seen. Two more charges of the hammers. All he really has, no builds. Zero. Just bullets. Just anger. Just that gene. It's the clutch. The tracking. Can't follow. It's the box. It's Tayson. It's a guarantee. And he's got so many mats now. Up above. He can find a way. He just clear his mind. Breathe some air. Calm himself down. He's got a chance to play the game. Vino in similar spots. His last box. One more mat. And he's left out to the fray. Finds one. 180. And he confirm it. Straight up to the skies. Has to do it all over again. Waiting for it. Thomas down. Malabuka gone. This might be Tayson's moment. Vino. We'll tune in with him in just a minute. This is huge from Tayson. All points from here on out. It's a lead he can keep pushing forward for. A very winnable game. Two more boxes left. Straight to the front side of the zone. He has the 1v1. Wrapped around. Peace control. Denied. Denied by Asa. But he survived his biggest competition. Malabuka and Thomas went down. And so he might have just done enough. For the rest of the lobby, though, after all the goats in this one have fallen, they now battle for their spot in the standings. Desi, Dark Desi, he's been real darkness in this game for a limbs. He's been a menace to any team that gives him the opening. But with just one build sitting here on this code, he needs to go absolutely huge. Rifty in a very similar spot. Flodex is in there, a big code onto Desi. 140 connects, and he takes him out. Absolutely active with the aim. Rifty by himself now. That wall down below, but it's Glubshi and JJ too. Ever so resilient, so powerful. You can't knock them off the spot. That wall finally down, Rifty. His breathing room is a distraction. He takes it out himself to guarantee the points. JJ too just has one task ahead of him. Take Rifty down. Nice options, but claim back fast from JJ too. His teammate may be up top, just playing for that heel game, dropping down below. It's Glubshi that wraps it up. Valiant effort from Rifty, but what a shift 
in the middle of the standings. What a game by JJ2, pushing the mid-game storm, pushing the end game, surviving waves of just damage, crashes everything that the GOATs couldn't live through, right? Look, JJ2, Gumshi, they were a team that was outside, right, in that 20 place area. And this win is huge for them in these final moments. They push their way up, they take out some of the best players in all of this competition. And we saw them win games in the qualifier and they do it here now in the FNCS final. A big win and the timing of it, so, so key to their chances of moving up in the standings. It's a perfect game plan for this team. All they need to do now is have a game just like that once again, when the pressure is highest for everyone else, when they're playing with their backs against the walls, you run in that field free. You get to choose what you want to do. And the control they had this game, I haven't seen that in any of the others they played. What a combo from Glupshi at the end. Him and JJ too, stellar performance. And look, it started from way early in that game, right? We saw them rolling in, taking down two teams in a matter of 10 seconds. They were clearly feeling it. They were on a roll and they win the game. But Shio, the standings, what are they gonna look like? Taysen Solo clutching, Malabuka and Thomas surviving, but going down before him. I don't know what to expect. <laughs> Even for the people in the middle of the pack, right? Like JJ too, uh, like Nebs as well, who's trying to find his way all the way up. They survived a lot longer. It's messy. We need Frankie. We need the analysts. What do we got going on? I don't know what we've got going on. It's so crazy. If the anticipation is so high, we only have one more game before we crown our first major champions of the year and it was fantastic in that game to see the usual players making it to the final circle but also the return of Glubshi and JJ2 because they won game five yesterday now they're picking up game number 11 they're definitely a duo to watch in the future yeah they really are and we coming into this we said that this is a top tier duo that have so much potential and they showed it as Shire and Levin mentioned they picked up early eliminations which just set them up for success for later on in the game took high ground at the perfect moment as well when high ground was a little bit messy we saw Queasy and Benno getting fought for it and they just took it and just took it so well. Perfect way of playing this game. Clean high ground execution, clean victory royale. It's what you love to see from JJ2 and Glubchi. The back-to-back -back game five VRs from this duo. You know they're going to be excited going into game 12, the last match of the day. But there's some storylines that I want to hit on as well with Thomas HD and Malabuka. Alongside Tayson and Merstache, these two duos, the battle, it's going to be insane. It's going to be insane. This is where it really where it starts to heat up because this is the final game of the day, of the weekend, of the season. It's all building up to this. And Frankie, this is the standings. This is the standing. Then just take a look at the points. 563, 560. I mean, Janice and Reason, they still could maybe come in with an upset. But to be honest, it's now pretty much a two-horse race. You'd think so, but this is this is Fortnite. This, this is, Fortnite. is FNCS. <laughs> Anything can happen. Realistically, I mean, Janice and Reason need both Malabuka and Mustache's teams to have poor performances in order to get a big, maybe 100 plus point game. So it's not completely out of the question mathematically. Realistically, with the way that Malabuka and Thomas and Mustache and Tayson are playing, they shouldn't have any issues in making endgame. Look, it's not out of the question, but when we're comparing these two duos, what I find interesting is that the player that Thomas HD has eliminated the most in FNCS finals is Taysen and the player that Merstache, Taysen's duo, has eliminated the most in FNCS's is Thomas HD. Wow. So these duos have had a long rivalry in Fortnite competitions. And now with us getting into the final match, the excitement, their nerves are at an all time high with both duos being neck to neck. I don't know who's going to take it. It's going to be intense. I mean, the way that Thomas and H uh, Thomas HD and Malabuka played this, they were just W-king everyone. They needed the surge damage. They needed to take those fights on. And again, they made it to endgame as a duo. Of course, they would have liked to have made it a little bit further. This, by the way, beautiful shot from Thomas HD. 190 onto Giras. Got them a crucial refresh to keep them going. But ultimately, it wasn't quite enough to fend off the rest of the teams. But of course, they did go down in a similar sort of time as Taysen did. But again, Taysen clutching up as a solo. These guys didn't do so well. Maybe it's enough to bring them back. If you think back earlier in the season, about this duo, Thomas and Malabuka. We constantly talked about the fact that they were fantastic in the early and the mid game. They managed to get through to the final few phases, but they were not popping off. They were always shy on the elimination side. Even yesterday, they had quite a quiet game in terms of those elims. And now today, they know exactly what they need to do. And Thomas is really performing. Meanwhile, Merstache and Tayson, it's kind of what we expect them to have that well-rounded game. 
It is, but it's also different to what we've seen from them throughout the, the qualifiers and throughout the rest of the season. They're not having big pop-off games as we've seen in the past. They're actually going a lot more consistent. I think this is definitely due to the zones, of course, being a little bit more in their favor today, but sure. they're definitely just playing out these consistency, and all of the credit here has to go to Taysen. Huge shots. Oh. This was a crucial refresh. Just got him continuing through this end game, and just Taysen clutching up as a solo so often today, Takata. It's beautiful to see. Look, Taysen has been fragging out, right? Yeah. He knows what's on the line, and throughout the qualifiers, you said it yourself, they were playing consistent, but not with as many eliminations as they've been getting in these final matches. Can we talk about the history as well between this top two duos as well? Is it Mersash and Malibuka used to play yep. together and Tayson and Thomas <laughs> used to play together? And now, potentially, both of these duos could book a spot in the Global Championships. And what's even more interesting as well is Mustache and Malibuka also played with Tayson in a few trio cups at the end of last chapter. So they've all started to mix and match together. They'll know each other very well. They'll know each other's play style. So maybe we'll see a little bit of that towards the end. Who's going to come out on top? Who's the better duo? We'll have to see. Who's going to be the duo? Look, I love what you said. Frankie, remember, two spots are for grabs in the global championship for yeah. the finals here of EU. So if Merstash and Taysen and Thomas HD and Malibuka end up first and second place, they're going to be going to the global championship. I wonder how friendly this rivalry is feeling now as they're queuing up in the lobby. <laughs> because this is the game where we're going to find out who's going to be lifting that axe of champions, who is going to be swishing it around in major number two in-game. I think you've probably seen it on the wall behind us. It's beautiful, it's prismatic, and it means that you are the best in Europe. Who do you think, though, is the best in Europe after these games? Look, I want to see Thomas HD take it. He is from De Denmark, and with the global championships being held in Denmark, I want to see him take it home. Tayson, add another crown to your collection. I'm sure he can do it. <sighs> Interesting. I'm not going to be biased at all because that is my privilege as the host. I don't have to pick <laughs> favorites, but right now, if I had to pick a favorite, it will be either of you two boys. We'll decide on that one later because there's no time to decide anything now except who is going to be our first major champion of the year. This is the decider. Game number 12. Welcome to the finale of Major One in Europe. Five weeks of grueling competition, and we're here right now with two teams in the top spot, basically already going to the Globals 11, but who's winning that crown here today? Who will it be? We are hopping right into game number 12. There are no more opportunities to solidify your legacy in this season. It has to be done now. It has to be done here. We're starting at Slappy Shores with the bus. Tasting the moustache will be some of the first to land. But will they be the last ones standing at the end of this game? Will they be the ones to hold the X of Champions? That is the plan, at least. They've been so consistent throughout this competition, throughout this day in particular. They've had their ups and downs this season, Shire. But when it mattered the most, they've stepped up. At a cost, it looks like, too. The fatigue might start to set in for either one of these teams. Having to play almost double time in each of these games compared to all the other duels, the surge problems we're seeing off rip. The fights they have to go through over and over again. Malibuka, Thomas, Taysen, Rastash, this is about to be insane. And look, it's game number 12, right? And all season long, everybody's been going, look, they land at the spot of the most oath-bound chest. Malibuka's just getting hammers out of regular chest. He doesn't even need the <laughs> oath-bound chest to get the hammers. That's the magic touch, and maybe that's the difference maker in today's final game. Look at that previous throne holders of just the experience we've been watching today. Raisin Janice in third place, almost now 100 points behind the top two competitors. They want to hold on to that spot. Catching up, it would be absolutely drastic, has to be miraculous, and those two teams must go down. We're not gonna talk about that reality too much here today focus on mainly that top two fight but for them we can't ignore 11 that they were in the lead for a majority of this competition yeah they sat at first place coming into day two 70 point lead and look even though they probably will not be finishing in the top two still should be proud of the season they've had no many not many people sorry expected them to be a top five team in this competition the ups and downs landing at a new POI for the finals there were plenty of things that weren't quite in their favor. But yet, once again, Jan is showing us why he is one of the greats of this game, making things work, even when they shouldn't. And now, for the top two teams, it's basically tied at this point. 
The differential doesn't matter too much if it's two or three points. If it's just one elimination. Janus Reason not done yet. Kind of have the zone that they won a lot of games at and have that control. Complete north side. Reason actually moving forward first. Initiative here once more. Always on the back wall. They're looking for chances to maybe strike a little bit, punch and weave, dodge backwards, play on the ropes. This time, throwing haymakers as Janus lands on the beach. Forcing his opponents to elevate. Looking for replaces on the walls. Hammers going all the way up as well. It's messy inside this fight. Reason to Janice have nothing to lose now. Forcing it. And what a nice flick from Janice. Finishing that one. It's just Boaz left now. Yeah, Jackie and Boaz, we've seen them struggle off spawn all throughout the 12 games. And here in game 12, they picked a different spot to land at. And once again, it's just not working out for them. It is their first taste of the FNCS finals. And so hopefully we'll see them come back stronger in further majors. But as for Major 1, it has not been theirs. Boaz will finally fall at the hands of Pixie. Of all the places to get involved in the fight, I don't think this Breakwater Bay area was the one. <laughs> to be honest, we've seen how intense it's been here between the likes of Pixie and Della, Janice Reason, and the many others in this area. As we zone in back towards that top two, the biggest issue for Thomas and Balabuka now has been their rotation path absolutely interrupted with so many teams. People setting traps inside igloos. <laughs> Thomas doesn't care, though. It's just one game of surprises, and after that, it's a matter of fact. It's business as usual. Him looking at players taking shots, landing big beams. And this game means everything for Thomas HD. For the past three years of competitive Fortnite, you could easily argue he has been a top three player in the world and he just hasn't quite been able to win the championship. And a lot of the time you ask people, okay, Levin, why hasn't he? What's been the factor for him not doing it? And, and there really isn't an answer a lot of the times, right? When all the teams he's played on, you typically consider him the best player. This might be the only team he's ever been on where he's not considered that because of how good Malabuka is. He doesn't fold, he doesn't choke. But here in this last game, it has to be the one. It has to be his moment. He has to have the game of his life. And who's he up against? Former teammate Taysen. The history these two have, the opponents they've taken down. It's been Mustache and Malabuka at times. It has been. It really has been. Foes turn to friends, and friends turn to foes for both of these teams. Taysen, so many championships to his name already. What would another one really mean to him? For some people, you might think, oh, he doesn't really care. It's taste and he's won it all. <laughs> but no, it's been so many seasons now. I was used to a time where every other season he's winning the championship. Chapter three wasn't quite able to grasp it. And with chapter three as well, there's people. I mean, he had a good chapter 11, right? Second, third overall. One season of a little bit of error. You see the, the, the throne people put him on. They say he has a horrible chapter. That's what people... Expect from Taysen, and they expect championships or nothing. And so when he doesn't win them, it's a bad season for him. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that in those seasons in Chapter 3, he wasn't working hard enough. He wasn't putting as much time into practice. Hold up, and he's still getting seconds and, and was, thirds. He was still doing well in plenty of competitions, but this season, this major Shio, he has been working harder than ever. Going back to his roots, working with Blood X, who was the coach that helped him way back in his early days when he rose to the top. And things are finally starting to click. This might be the time for Ark and Zaka in this fight against Pixie and Della. They finally actually won it out. <laughs> Ark and Zaka, they've had so many struggles all season long, all session long, I should say. But finally winning against a team that's been so strong in this Breakwater Bay area. And look how they did it. Sneaking up. Pixie had no clue the Excalibur. Oh. 200 to zero in a splash. And Della stood no chance after that. Oh, they'll be up against Janice and Reason in just a second. What I'm seeing from a bunch of these teams is that they understand now how these finals work. You can't just play on that consistency, chill out and let that game six kind of ride. You have to take things into your own hands. I think the only two teams that'll be playing kind of wary and cautious, one of them on your screen, Mustache and Taysen. Damage taken, and that should be scary because Frey and Clownski have nothing to lose. Full shield pop, they know what they're dealing with. 
They can still really go all in for this fight at any moment. There's nothing scarier than a player with nothing to lose. <laughs> Mustache and Tayson have to stay alert. You cannot fumble. You cannot trip at the last hurdle. That's the kind of thing that sticks on your legacy forever. Nobody forgets it. Unfortunately for Janice and Reason, what was once looking like a brilliant story of a repeat championship for Janice and a chance for Reason to show he's still one of the top German players has turned into a game where Reason now is on the run. How many players? I, I, there were a bunch of players at Breakwater, but even here <laughs> in this last game, it feels like everybody's here. Well, I mean, this is what it was. Faulty splits, that bottom right side of the map, so contested, and we've seen how crazy it gets, even from Frenzy. Everyone's in a mishmash. The top left side of the map has been composed. We have, I think, the most duels all the way across Breakwater down to the south, but they've all kind of bided their own time, especially in the north. This time, though, they've had enough. They don't care. They're tired of all the tags from long ranges. Reason taken down, and we're not going to ignore the greatness from this duel that we've seen all throughout the weekend. Them holding on, having that big lead, one of the biggest we've seen inside FNCS coming into day two. But unfortunately, trying to maintain that, trying to climb back, has made them falter. Now down to what looks like third place, Janice and Reason will be taken out due to their aggressive play style in that last game. Well, for Queasy and Vino, that will be joy, good news, a chance to claim third place, and it won't be quite what they want. They want at least the top two to secure that spot in globals, but at least third place would be a big bump in prize earnings. It's a game of redemption for the whole lobby. Queasy Vino get to finally break off on that head-to-head -head and get third. Savage and ZX as well. Finally taken down, Kaden Kupov spawn. <laughs> That's been a 24 game fight, it feels like, let alone 12 games. Nevs in pink as well, on a north side rotation. Get to climb far and by themselves, uninterrupted. The top two though, where they base up will dictate exactly how this game goes. The deep half of day two, the last three games of this competition, I mentioned it before, there have been a lot of surge issues. And with this game being that much more aggressive, yes, those surge counters might not be as high, but there'll be less players to be able to shoot all the way around them. Curious to see if Malabuka or Mustache have that damage down just yet. And what we've seen from Queasy all season long, positioned here up on this hill, Vino on the other one, a bit further to the north. This has been the typical split we've seen for them to base up for surge. It's worked so effectively all season long. And it needs to work here in game 12. Vanyak up against Belusi and a big <laughs> shot connecting, making it look easy. That was a left-hander as well. And right next to the reboot van to pick his teammate back up. And it will be way deep in the zone, but still a chance for them in this game. So much to quantify inside this game. Taco, we need some help. Look, Shia, we were just on the man himself, but Tayson and Mustache. Malabuka and Thomas HD, it is coming down to the wire for first and second place finish between these two duos. And when you see the top two teams, both with Shockwave Hammers in their inventory, you have to assume that absolute chaos is going to be what ensues between these two for the leaderboard spots. Chaos indeed, but I would even say structure taco because them both having hammers now means rotations are guaranteed. Rotations have been easy for them all yeah. day long. They've not had problems in that regard. My worry is what happens when it comes to the end game. We've seen them in so many of these games side by side. They're playing on similar layers. They're taking each other out in some games. In a lot of games now, they've taken <laughs> each other out. But with just how close it is between them in the standings, if that was to happen, it would be the decider. It would be the end. Ah, goosebumps. Goosebumps, man, goosebumps. Three times it's been Mustache and Malabuka back to back, or two times, and then once Tayson versus Malabuka. These teams have gone head to head over and over, as Levin is mentioning. And it's almost a game of roulette in terms of who gets these Elims down below. If one team slightly presses the D key or their controller shifts to the right, it's Thomas's. If it goes towards the left, Tayson claims it in a flash. And, and it's just a contrast between the styles we see, right? In some games, it's 
Thomas and Malabuka. A bit scuffed and lurking on the backside of the zone, just trying to frag out as best as possible. Just chasing a moustache, front side, claiming space, playing things to the book. And in the other, in the other games, it's swapped completely the other way around. Chasing a moustache, looking <laughs> scuffed so on the backside, <laughs> right? So it, it, it literally goes either way. And if they make a mistake, it's Queasy and Vino on height. It's the Bermuda Triangle of EU that end up just shooting these guys down, causing the most unlucky situations for every single team. They have to be vigilant of all layers. Seti and Cami not really seen many end games inside this competition. They've been in a few, but off spawn issues overall. I mean, I, I would say the most upset prediction of all. I, a lot of people had Seti Cami doing well. Some people would argue the rivalry of EU between. Ain't no rivalry. There ain't no rivalry between Kami Seti, Queasy Vino. Let's stop this now. Yes, a brilliant fight in the invitation ought to close things out. There ain't no rivalry there. There definitely is one here right now. We have switched up the leaderboard update. It is just two teams. Ex teammates. It's not just the acts of champions, it's not just the prize money. It's who carried who, it's who's better. Who's truly built different? Who cost more games? Who's the better man? Who holds the bragging rights? That's what we're playing for between those two teams. So much history between them. So much history in Fortnite. Those four players account for so much of competitive EU history. And no matter which way the story goes, this one we'll talk about for years and years to come. Cutting the tension real quick. Double metal from Queasy out of the chest. That's a good RNG. Back in it. Taste and Moustache. Already inside circle. We're ending at Brutal Bastion. I feel like this is where the entire FNCS began. I swear we've been so many times in these games. Not just here in the final. But throughout Surge Week and the qualifiers as well. And with Taste and Moustache. Just 19 above Surge. This is not a comfortable spot to be in, in a game where they have to be at their very best. They have to have the best game possible. We talk about these games where they have control, they're on that front side, they're not shambles. It's games where they have power. It's games where they can think. They can kind of plan and plot where they want to go. When they're just 19 above surge, that's not a possibility. They have to base their game plan off of where other teams are. They have to look for shots first and think about winning the game second. And having the win as your second priority, yeah, that's not key to success. Especially in this one. I'll be very curious to see where Malabuka and Thomas stand in terms of Storm Surge as well, where they are above the threshold. Because if they're in a similar spot to Taste and the Moustache, then that's cool. Then it's just a battle of who does get that damage first, who can get that refresh, that boost in Surge. And the zone couldn't be more even either. Both teams, Slightly landing far away from it. 214 above for Thomas HD and Malabuka. That might just be enough as a difference maker. And the big thing, they're sharing the same type of side of the zone. They pull the next one as well. Thomas could very well hold Taysen from making this next rotation. They set up center third and they're rewarded with the fourth zone. This is where they want to be. This is the perfect position, like you said, to just hold teams from getting in. Taysen and Mustache, they're trying to get in as fast as possible. And they will get in without taking too much damage and without having to use too much mats either. Insanity. Perfect rotations from these two. Well, that's another hero there. They've done that all day long, all season long. It's all about doing that critical piece of damage to put them in a more comfortable position for Surge. We've seen big stalemates between those two teams as well. From the fourth all the way to the sixth, seventh zone, sometimes they only deal damage and they're not able to finish any knocks they have down low. If they go zero for zero, they're right beside each other. It's going to be tasting with the lead. They're just three points ahead right now. Thomas needs to find an Elam to have that ever slight crack right in front of the duo in speed on score. So Taysen still kind of dictating the pace, although they're ever so tied. Kyrie and Pink winning one of the games where these guys had a crazy bout side by side. It's like the referee just knocking out both boxers. They have a chance of high ground again. The ref might win. <laughs> these guys, when given the opportunity to play it, 
And they won't shy away. We've seen them win a game from that position. And the setup here has been great from them. 600 above, using that bush at the top of their base, a bit of extra cover. And shields when they get tagged with that bush warrior augment. Thomas and Malabuka, of course, 200 above, which is a bit better than what we saw from Tatum and Mustache, but still not comfortable. You still need to deal some damage. They can do it from range. From what I saw from Tatum and Mustache, it was desperation. 19 above, where are they at now? 222. Both sitting rather evenly in surge as well. Both evenly matched coming into this end game. Who will pull the 50-50 zone? That fifth zone is so crucial. They're both on the same side. If you're looking at the mini map, the coolest thing is the least colorful arrows. Thomas and Malabuka are the brown ones sitting at the south there. Replay for Resguard, Halnada. Inside the box, he stays resilient with the shots. Resguard finds a few. Able to take out Dark Chips, formerly known as T-Chips for the moment. Halnada down now as the rest of the lobby, the 10th, the 15th, 20th, 40th places all make room for this big bout. The main card to have their match at the top. And the zone, when I look at it, pulls away from both teams. They are being tested. Max rotation on ice towards the Bastion. Queasy and Vino are down, and they didn't quite get enough points to overtake Janice and Reason. Just two points behind, they sit in four for the day. But like Shio said, a rotation will have to be made here by both of these teams. Unfortunately, both have hammers. And so it won't be too tough of a task. Taste of the mustache just going unscathed. Nobody even looking at them as they make their way in. They moved in so far in first. I think Malibuka Thomas are still way far back. And the zone's almost overtaken them. They're going for damage. Looking for it now. Not flying in just yet. They're right beside each other. Malibuka lost a lot of shield, though. He's going to be able to stay safe. Side by side, first and second, staring each other down. Do they know it? Box to box. They may not know it, but we do. And we already know how much they've interacted throughout this tournament. So close together. So close in the standings. Queasy and Vito might not be here, but Firebro and Grohl's an absolute force to be reckoned with on height. They make it punishing if you make a mistake. So this is not going to be free in terms of pressure for either Tayson, Malabuka, Thomas, or Mustache. They'll look to punish as much as possible for a chance to further their position in the leaderboard as well. Up the prize money. Up their overall social rankings. You know how people view them coming into Major 2. And now the zones start to move. Same stakes for Tayson and Mustache. They were playing opposite sides of the zone with Thomas and Malibuka so far. Now they will move in tandem side by side. A single wall misplaced might be a shot from second to first. And already Tayson's in trouble. Gruden just applying a bit of pressure, Tayson. Wanted to get a clearer path so that when the time comes to hammer, they don't get stuck beneath a hill, stuck beneath builds. Thomas and Malibuka, they're now starting to make their move. Couldn't quite scout as much, but still now even getting broken out. Oh dear, this is not okay. Thomas just has to hammer out no! the emergency procedure. And he's all the way in, almost falling off the cliff, but he finds a build to actually latch onto. Malibuka, can you follow? Absolutely you can. These are some of the best players in Europe. And now finally side by side, unfortunately. It's not the plan to where they want to be. Taste and Mustache, they're executing flawlessly, but they're down below Surge. Their position, absolutely powerful, but they're not finding any shots. Nothing to fully see. Thomas taking down a few. Bexy gone away. Malabuka in trouble. Max shot side by side. They have a few refreshes, but Malabuka's also trapped in the box. It's chaos. They can't see. Thomas is down. Malabuka is going to be able to actually almost pick one up. The conversion is going to be there. He's out of ammo on almost everything. Has to reload. It's all up to him now. It's Savage that he takes down. Hammer in the inventory. He's making sure everything is clean. Going in and out. The redeploys there for him. He has all the tools to make the solo clutch a possibility. It's him right now in the driver's seat. He's got the hammer. He's got the surgeon. He's got so many builds. But it's all on him. The pressure is there. Tasting him with that. That's still a duo. Head on points to Malabuka. Pushing forward. Mustache falls. Malibuka versus Tayson. He hammers closer to heights. All the way to the front port of zone. Both so healthy on match. This will come down to some of the final moments when Malibuka falls down. Every hammer, a risk for them. They have to double up on boxes. Tayson moves forward again. Malibuka towards that top sign. Tayson 
on a box beside Bevy, he's in trouble. Knocking out his door, Taysen, taking out a 50 HP, Maluka looking safe. He makes a few boxes, Bevy's just still holding him down. Running out of match for Taysen, he has to switch layers, but three fire shots from all sides. Taysen in trouble, in a blender right now. Let's find a way to get things through, Malabuka. Absolutely peachy up top. Setting down traps, Taysen has a chance to breathe. Fireball rolls, not stopping the pressure. Taysen flies all the way in front. No match now. Taysen needs this elimination to stay in the game. And he finds it on the Marius. The GOAT continues his reign, staying in front of the competition, but unaware of where the teammate is. Malabuka, delayed for a long time on the top right. Has to move now. Taysen, a lot of max. Charges refilled. He pushes forward, chin into a box. Ignores everything because he prefers position. He prefers to live. And he can land the shot. But once again, finds himself on a low point. 48 HP. Malabuka is absolutely stress free in this position. Taysen, though, up ahead in terms of healings and points. It will be Malabuka who has to make the first move. Taysen, with that lead, both players getting a chance to breathe. Malabuka with a duo below him. Taysen still looking on the right side. Can't find much just yet. High point of elevation, Malabuka gets dropped. Malabuka in trouble. One player below him, low HP, can't edit the floor, has to hammer all the way out. Taysen on the backside of his own. No match left. Taysen hung high to dry. Malabuka on his last match as well. Goal. So close to the mark. Malabuka in the box. It's done. That's why he's the goal. Taysen stays alive when it shouldn't be possible. And now he just needs to keep on racking points. He needs to stay alive. Fred's on the other side of that wall. He just needs to stay quiet. As long as nobody notices, and he's good, but he falls as well. Taysen versus Malabuka at the end there. Everything riding on those moments, but the game still continues. Grows and fire. They've held hype for a while now, and they're still gonna look to close out that game. Seti and Kami, maybe a little too late for them, but they are down here, and they are taking people out. They need to start claiming space now, though. A lot of these builds are not there, and there will be players dropping. There will be opportunities to pick up some more LMs. There's a player count to windows Mappy in this one. But slowly falling, he might not be able to reach the top there with that hammer. Has a chance though. Brutal Bastion bounces back and forth. Fireborn rolls, the only constant that survives. Heat rises, and they're on fire up top. Cami, Sadi, Mappy, put in the oven. They can't stand it. Jump all the way down below, Mappy can't live through the pressure. Seti and Cami now finally are alive as they should be in EU. And this might be a salvage situation for their overall placement. Absolute redemption for Rose and Firebro up top. Having this win could cement them as threats coming into Major 2. The final game of EU goes down to a 2v2. Rose and Fire up above with Cami and Seti down below. They're farming every single bit of material they can. Rose using the bush to drop down and knock them way into the storm. He uses that shockwave hammer to perfection. Set he's down on HP, but Rose finally falls as well. It's Fire versus Kami. Kami in the storm. Fire doesn't know where he is, and he's not gonna find him either. Kami's way deep in there. The Siphon will get his HP back up, and he's gonna chase, he's gonna hunt. Does Kami have enough though, in terms of heals? No, he does not. He will fall. Fire will take it. Grove will take it. A six elimination victory out will be huge for their story. But Shia, all anybody's thinking about right now is who is the champion? Is it Taysen? Is it Malabuka? Both teams doing everything they could in those final moments. And what a game that was. So intense between the two. Fire winning out from above, making great use of the Shockwave Hammer. We've seen it play such a key part of these end games all season long. Grohl's just knocking them way in there, and they did have enough heals to out at last. Absolutely bonkers, especially from Grohl's. The option to fall from height onto a bush, use the hammer, slam to send his opponents in the storm. As nail-biting as the 2v2 that we followed all game. What a journey, what a story for Grohl's and Fire there towards the end. I absolutely love it. The main question is on hand though, Levin, what we're seeing right now, so close neck and neck. Both their duels had some elims before they fell, and who knows what happens in those end moments. It's very close between those two top teams. It, it literally does not get closer than this. The best players in the world all battling it out after the season we've had. 
I, I, I'm literally just waiting. <laughs> I, I just need to see it. I need to see it because honestly, for both of these teams, we set up the stories all game long. Like it means so much for both sides. Everybody wants to win. All their fans want of them to win. It, it, it is so intense now, Shire. It's the per it's perfect. It's not even two separate teams. It's two duos that played together and now are apart. We have to know, Frankie, Takata, Mini Miner, who has won this FNCS? Going into game number 12, there were just three points separating our top two duos on the leaderboard. And now we can reveal there's just one point between it and your oh champion of major what? number one, Amersash and Tayson. Tayson cementing his status as one of the goats of the game, leading Mersash to his first FNCS Grand Final. They're the kings of consistency, playing so well, whatever position they find themselves in, and they've been rewarded with the Acts of Champions and a spot in the Global Championships. And you called it Mini Minor. This is why we watch. This is why we love Fortnite, because one point is all that separated Taysen and Mustache from Thomas HD and Malibuka. We have to give both duos credit as to how well they played, especially in that last game, neck and neck performance, seeing them both on the screen at the same time. I love that. Look, the way Malibuka went down as well was because he wasn't able to finish off that one elimination. Yeah. If he got that elimination, it would have been enough. But now Taysen showing why he's the GOAT now as well Murstash getting his first first place finish in an FNCS Grand Finals and we've seen the GOAT Tayson online but now that he's taken home the Axe of Champions today it also means we're gonna see him in the Global Championship and I'm curious to see if he's gonna continue that GOAT status in person. This is a duo that placed in the top 10, I believe, again, across all six games yesterday. I think they probably did the same again today. They never got unlucky, but it wasn't really a question of luck. It was skill all the way. Their game plans are so well thought out. Yeah, they are. And finally, they figured it out. We've talked about it all season. They've been a little bit hot and cold. They've had really, really solid games on high and then not so great games going down to surge. Now, where it matters most, on the big stage, Taysen does it again and alone as a solo, clutching up so many times. Time today we've seen it throughout the whole day and again where it mattered most he was cool as a cucumber he was perfect in that last game you said it yourself mini minor they were hot and cold throughout the season but they made it happen in day two grand finals day one they were a little shooken up mm. but day two they focused they adapted and it led to them picking up that axe of champions it is incredible though there's two hundred thousand dollars on the line they've just earned themselves that place in the global championships obviously the active champions as well and the way that Tayson played in those final couple of zones it was like there was absolutely no fear erilling around like no one was going to be able to get a shot on him Levin said it himself that is why he <laughs> is the goat because he doesn't let those outside external third party exogenous effects affect him it doesn't matter because he is in the zone he's focusing on it and he has picked up yet another FNCS title he was locked in those last moments you could tell that Tayson was locked in but I also want to speak on Malibuka Thomas HD yeah. remember there are two spots for the global championship in EU so both Murstash and Tayson and also Malibuka and Thomas HD will be qualified to the global champion and they're gonna get to go head to head once again. I'm so happy for them. Honestly, Malibuka solo clutching right there. He wouldn't have known that Tayson was still hanging on by a thread, picking up eliminations and refreshes, but he did so well. I'm such a big fan of this duo, and I have no doubt that if they do stick together, they'll go to even bigger heights than this in Major 2, Major 3, and in Global Championships. I can't wait to see how they play on that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. I I'm hoping we get to see them positioned side by side because of the fact that these duos do have history with each other. I'll be really curious to know if they're messaging each other right now, <laughs> congratulating each other, or whether they you know they need a little bit of time to cool down, because it must be kind of hard coming so close to the top spot. But obviously they've aimed, they've gained really big rewards as well uh, in booking that global championship place. But right now, let's remind ourselves of the action today with our fabulous cast of Shio and Love and 2K. Thank you so much. Frankie, I mean, now, Levin, I'm just flabbergasted still from that game. Lots of competition that happened all across the world, though. From Europe to start things off or just to end things off here, Taysom Verstash, congratulations once again. East, West, and Brazil will continue very soon, but from Asia, Levin, we still had some big winners. Look, Pipo and Zagu, they have been dominant in Asia all major long. 
Very excited to see them at Globals at the end of the year. Zagu obviously impressed the world back then, playing with a new teammate now in people. It's going to be a good time. Absolutely. For Moshena as well, our son Stug and Anon Thug as well. Rocked it in, looked really good the entire time too. Very nice. In the Middle East, you can't forget Twist and Rapid looking so nice from their region too. I mean, all across the board, these are big names to look out for at those global championships. Yeah, super happy for my boy Rapid from Middle East as well. I've met him, right? Super nice guy. Definitely deserves it. Works hard. Going to be good to see them at Globals. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, this is just, I think, one of the best FNCSs we've seen start off so far. Usually, the first one is where some of the middling things are happening. People are getting used to the meta overall. Shockwave hammers Takata, right? Big two-on-two -two battles towards the end in the final game. You can't ask for more. I was literally biting my nails. I was watching <laughs> both of you call it, and I was seeing Malabuka. I was seeing Taysen going head-to-head. -head. That last elimination that Malabuka just missed out on it. It was incredible. It always delivers, doesn't it? The final day, the final game always delivers. Think back to Invitation that we touched on it at the beginning of the weekend. How good was that? And yet again, it's happened. We've seen a crazy last game clutch from two of the greatest players in the region. But this is just the first major of the year, guys. The, the skill ceiling is going to be raised. This is a new map for Chapter 4. We're going to see so much more, I imagine, for all of these journeys. It, it, it's crazy. You know, the script writers, you know, props to you. You've got to give you a round of applause. It is ridiculous. One point separating those right. teams. I, I, I'm honestly, like, Taysen, how he stays alive for that long. He had no business doing that. But again, it's why I say, that's why he's the MVP. That's why he's the GOAT. That is why he is the GOAT. Nobody can do that. It's Taysen Magic. It might, might just be, honestly, check everything about him. See the setup, see what's up. Because he has something no one else has, right? That natural talent honed in. Talking about last chapter, some people not even tuning into how well he was doing. Now, I think that's silenced, absolutely. Starting off the year, winning the major. I, I don't want to put salt in the wound, but Thomas HD, whoever's cursed him, please oh. just allow my boy, please <laughs> allow my boy two points away, basically, from being a champion. How many times is he going to come so, so close? This guy deserves it, man. Uh, you know, hopefully he's not too down in the dumps in terms of... I, I, I know how much he wants to win. He's so passionate about winning everything he does. It's not just that. All the new players we saw many, right, come in. So many people off that first day just continued to survive top 10 in the second day. That was beautiful for me. Yeah, it really was. And this is just a contrary to what we've seen in previous seasons. We've seen so many of the top dogs doing well across the whole weekend. Now we're seeing some new faces maybe to look out for in future majors and maybe the global championships towards the end of the year. It's going to be great to see because so many new names. Look, Taysen, we know him as the GOAT. He oh, yeah. does exceptionally well, especially in online tournaments, but now I want to see him perform the same at the global championship. His experience now in this in-person event, I want to see him take it home. You heard the guys. This is just the beginning. Season one may be done for chapter four, but we've got plenty more to come. But before we go, we've got to say a massive congratulations to your major champions, Taste of the Mustache. And we will see you guys <laughs> on the Battle Bus. <laughs> Let's go!